almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Yeah, cinnamon roll sounds awesome, Dove. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you make it really hard for me to <laughs> I gotta I gotta finish typing it. I didn't do it in, in time with my one thumb over here. Cinnamon rolls sound awesome. So let's see, we got uh we got Tim in the house. He's in there early, Dove, myself, and uh Craig. The question is, uh, what was it that you typed that Ohio means uh, that's hello, right? It's like a real Ohio famous. Ohio famous is good morning in Japanese. Oh, good morning. Yeah. So right below that, I said, Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Yeah. So it's uh, it's like we probably would still be saying Ohio till about noon, but uh, Konnichiwa, you'd start saying around, you know, midday. In the evening, mm-hmm. you'd say Konbanwa. 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 Oh, Konbanwa. Yeah. Konbanwa. I mean, that it's, sounds uh, high. <laughs> it kind of sounds like it has a G in there, but, you know, Konbanwa. Interesting. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, uh, Craig. Uh, had a bit of an adventure uh, last week uh, celebrating, uh, and I'll let him share what he wants to share. We'll just say it was a celebration. Uh, that's the way he chooses to look at it. And uh, Craig, you want to fill anyone in? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my my father's brother's wife, uh, my aunt, passed. Uh, long life, you know. She lived to be eighty-one years old. In fact, I I didn't realize she was that old. He and my or her and my uh, my uncle met each other when they were 14 years old and they were married for 61 years. And uh, it was just wonderful to see it. They they were members of my father's church. He is the pastor of of a church now, 35 Mm -hmm. years, I think. And uh, it was just amazing to see how many people's lives she touched. Uh, You know, you see big you see big uh, funerals uh for various reasons or if it gets too big they move it to another uh to another venue because there are so many people whatever but she was like i spent my whole entire you know a lot of my christian living here at this church growing learning being fed feeding and this is where you know i was i want to be and it's interesting enough her son my my cousin uh is also a pastor of a church and he started off the the message, if you will, indicating that it was, I think he entitled Mama's Instructions. And one of the few things he said is that she had begun in telling him, his father, the family, the things that she didn't want th- mm-hmm. that she had seen in other, other uh, funerals. Mm-hmm. And one of the things was, she said, people who are gonna speak have two minutes. And he says, if I have to be the strong arm, I will be. And nobody's going to speak longer than that. And everybody was true to, uh, you know, to what she wanted and said that. And he said, do you do you know what a repass is? Repass is like where they have, uh, and this might be a culture thing, but where they feed people after the funeral. Oh, he said, yeah. we called it a wake. Okay, a wake. So I think we call our wakes, I, mean, I don't know. But anyway, we call it a repass. It was called term repass. He said, she said, and don't have a repass. If they're hungry, they can eat at home. <laughs> so we didn't have any of that. We just celebrated our life. It was wonderful. Uh, then, uh, you know, fellowship afterwards, seeing each other, family, that mom, dad, my my stepsisters, cousins, those kind of things. Uh, as we were there, we were only there for two and a half days. So, uh, but it's a good time with family and good time to celebrate her life. So, amen. Love you, Aunt Janet. Yeah. Um, Rest in peace, Aunt Janet. Right, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if uh, you know, it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, um, you know, it's kind of saving a lot of labor for the people that would have to organize that. A lot of stress and a lot of time. You know, the cleanup. You know, you know when sure. the, when they they should be focusing on mourning or celebrating or however. That's a really good point, actually. That's uh that's very it's very humble and magnanimous of her to mm-hmm. not only help out the people that would have perhaps felt obliged or, you know, obligated, well, I'll same word, obligated to, to do that. Yeah. That's, that's a beautiful story. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah. just, uh, we're a little, little bit low energy today. Um, and so it's interesting cause, and, and Craig, would you like to, when, when you were talking about my spiral, uh, the, like the eggshell or the, the snail shell thing going on in my head, do you want to, do you want to describe something about that? Or I don't, again, I don't want to give too much of your medical stuff out. No, it's all right. Well, I mean, I had to, 
I, I guess it's been like three weeks now, but uh, went in the hospital with, uh, in, which was determined to be spinal meningitis, viral spiral meningitis. Uh, um, sometimes they have things where they don't know exactly what it is. They call it nonspecific. They had put little mm -hmm. labels to it. The bottom line is I, I was sick and it was affecting my spinal cord. But some of the things that I had been dealing with is pain in my head, particularly when I coughed. Mm -hmm. It would it would hurt my head. I think you described it more on the base of your neck and kind of spiraling up through. Yeah. It's like, Go it's ahead. almost like the pain goes here and then it'll kind of, kind of snail shells, like almost like, you know how like a snail shell will go into a point, but it does that spiral. And then which is mine good. too in the front of my head. Uh, but a lot of the things that you said that when we were talking before we came on is when I coughed, I mean, that was the thing is I couldn't, I, I, I had it in my back and lower back as well. When I coughed, I could not find any relief at all. Mm. And Liza was like, honey, like, you know, I, I have a fairly high tolerance for pain, but uh, yeah. she just she just was like, you know, we need to go check this out. Because, I mean, it, it was fluish like, you know, I had these aches and pains and those kind of things. But after that, those were negative. She was we, they were we were concerned about, you know, meningitis, which is, you know, what you should be concerned about. So anyway. No, it's it just struck me as interesting. <clears throat> it, it's to me, it's very, very interesting. I'm gonna have. Um, so we were talking about. All right. So the the whole spiral meningitis, viral spiral meningitis. Um, the fact that something something has occurred to me. Uh, it's been in my brain quite a bit the last uh, probably about the last year or so. It's been really blaringly notice noticeable to me. And here's and here's where we're gonna perhaps crowdsource the, 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 the group a little bit as well. Folks, I, I've been noticing something kind of troubling about all these medical, you know how like they have all these medical commercials, constantly medical commercials, and you'd hear like this laundry list of things that they would warn you, um, don't take it if you have this, don't take it if you're allergic to it, the medication that they're, that, that, that they're saying not to take because you might be allergic. I mean, all this cover your, your own behind kind of stuff, right? Let me take a beat before you continue. Sure. Uh, neither of us, Todd nor myself, are doctors, and anything we are saying is strictly uh, speculation and those kind of things. So, yeah, absolutely. Disclosure. Disclosure. <laughs> we're, we're just. I'm just asking questions. Um, sure. Absolutely. I, I, yeah. I'm just. I just. I'm just curious about this. I, it has become apparent to me, at least in the last year, and maybe it's been a little bit longer than that, because I don't watch a lot of mainstream media, and that's usually like Fox News or CNN. That's where you see all the pharmaceutical commercials. They're always pushing out big pharma there, right? So it, it became aware to me that for the last three, three and a half years, especially even when Joe Rogan came out talking about taking ivermectin, and everyone made, you know, the big news were coming after him saying, oh, he takes horse pace. What a re, -re you know, and like just really... And, and 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 Joe Rogan's like probably in the pinnacle of his health, right? And uh, we can we can probably I'll, I'll probably pull up a video in regards to that here in a minute. Um, but here's so here's the interesting thing. What's up, Third Eye? Good to see you. Um, ivermectin is an anti-parasitical, right? Primarily, it's an anti-parasitical. Um, ivermectin has been used probably I think for the last ninety years, almost close to a century. Um, it's very cheap. Um, the patents out, you know, you get generic versions of it. So it's very cost effective. So they were poo pooing it perhaps because it worked because it was effective. So now hear me out. Let's unpack this for a second. Okay. If ivermectin is an anti-parasitical and it was effective on whatever was going out into our bodies over the last three or four years. And they were trying to discourage people from taking it. weren't weren't letting doctors. I tried to get it from my doctor. He won't he won't go anywhere near it because they're threatening to take these people's licenses away for for prescribing it. Um, there were other remedies that were de that were uh, antibody. What do they call it? Where they were redoing the antibodies, like therapy. Oh yeah, the blood. Um, not recycled. I know what you're talking about, but I can't think of the term. But uh, I'll look it up and see if I can find it. Sure. So, uh, so here's here's the interesting thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to bring up Joe Rogan with some ivermectin. But I want you guys I want you guys to pay attention to the fact that some of these and, and from from here on out, pay attention to the fact that synthetic mRNA, bingo. Um, 
are you okay if, if uh justin if you got time man and you want to come up and opine i'll i'll put the uh i'll send you i'll send you the i'll copy of this and you can come on up if you don't have a problem with that craig no but i'll just put it in here and if you want to come up and uh because i know you got a background in, in medicine as well and at least some some level of medicine but here here's what i want to talk about right here's what bothers me Pay attention. I'm going to try to bring up some of the advertisements for the um, for the big pharma. And I've noticed at least in the last year or so, they're saying don't take it if you have a parasitical infection. I've never heard them talk about not taking certain medications if you have a parasitical information much past like a year and a half, two years ago max. I find that very, very interesting. Right. So I'm, I'm going to try to bring up some stuff. Would you like to opine a little bit on uh, on anything like do you want to? give a description of what ivermectin is. I don't know if you've looked that up or not. And I'm going to well, try to find some videos. Um, so I just, the abstract for it, discovered in the late 1970s, the pioneering drug ivermectin, a dihydro derivative of avermectin, originating solely from a single microorganism isolated at the Kitasato Institute in Tokyo, Japan, from Japanese soil, has had an immeasurably beneficial impact on improving the lives and welfare of billions of people throughout the world. Originally introduced as a veterinary drug, it kills a wide range of internal and external parasites in commercial livestock and companion animals. It was quickly discovered to be ideal in combating two of the world's most devastating and disfiguring diseases, which have plagued the world's poor throughout the tropics for centuries. It is now being used free of charge as the sole tool in campaigns to eliminate both disease globally. It has been used to successfully overcome several other human diseases and new uses for it are continually being found. This paper looks in depth at the events surrounding ivermectin's passage from being a huge success in animal, in animal health and to widespread use in humans, a, devil, a development which has led many to describe it as, quote, wonder drug. All right. It is it is a wonder drug, guys. So that's it's interesting how there's a lot of mockery for it. And I'm going to try to find, and I'm going to have to do some pausing and stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and share this um cnn made rogan look green while taking it yeah oh yeah exactly doc and understand so if if the people that are trying to control you in such a negative way are so desperate for you to not um be well and that they try to malign you good morning justin good to see you that they try so desperately to ma to malign what it is that you're doing to mock you to you know, I'm tempted to show like all the other hit pieces as well. But this is this is Joe Rogan talking about it on his own experience. So um, I don't know if I'm going to get nailed for showing this, but I think it's important to show it. And I hope he doesn't copyright it. Um, but I, and again, hey, how you doing, Jocko? Good to see you. I think somebody said Jocko's in. Yeah, there's Jocko. Um, I'm going to turn on my fan real quick. It's getting hot in her. So we'll take off all our clothes. All right, so mm, 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 mm. <laughs> take my clues. It's the Rogan experience. Well, well, well. well, well it is well. an old horseworm rope. <laughs> I'm glad you glad you're well, man. Bro, do I have to sue CNN? I don't know. I know. Do you? You're making shit up. They keep saying I'm taking horse dewormer. I literally got it from a doctor. It's an American company. Mm -hmm. It's a it. They won the Nobel Prize in 2015 for use of human beings. Yeah, and CNN is saying I'm taking horse dewormer. Yeah, what? So what they I'm must asking. know that the, that's a lie. Well, a lot of people. So I just want to I want to pause it real quick because again copyright reasons, but also um send sill. Don't forget all that were killed from the Redemzevir protocol. I don't know much about that since so. Um, and thank you for uh, sharing that. Thank you for saying something. Uh, it's a new name for me. I'm not familiar with it. Um, we got to hear yeah. that the, the origin from Sinclin. Is it Clin? Maybe she's a, uh, it's he or she is a clinician. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, well, I don't know. Um, Sindocyblin is a, is a, the mushroom for, right? Sindocyblin. Hmm. Sinsaliblin. Sin I don't know, maybe that's a play on like mushrooms, like taking mushrooms. But it's, don't forget all that were killed from the Redems, I can't even pronounce that, Redems, Redemsevir protocol. My wife could figure these all out. She's a, she's an MA. I mean, she's not Remdesivir. anybody high. Remdesivir, that, thank you. 
people saying it. <laughs> right, but a lot of people can say it. Okay. Yeah. Like the internet says it. Who cares? Sure. But, but CNN is right. saying it. Yeah, rendesivir and ventilators killed people. And and let's not forget how much money each hospital. I, wasn't it? Some of these hospitals were getting thirteen thousand bonus on top for treating people with the the Wu flu. And we'll, we'll try to call it the Wu flu or the sweet and sour sniffles, or we'll, we'll try to call it the, the, the coof. You know, we'll try to call it everything, but what it really is. Cause we're, I don't really want to get throttled to the point where this doesn't go out. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of like moder moderating my speech to the point where I'm not allowed to say certain words. Uh, that that's really annoying to me, but let's not cut our nose off to spider face. So, so the, the whole wool flu thing, right. Um, there was what was it the monoclot what was it, the mono something it, it's talking about the blood where you're putting the monoclotum monoclonal yes that's it monoclonal that was actually doing really well locally and then they ended that program it was people it was helping people almost instantly um, i don't know if that's the word here all right we got joe cool in the house do you mind if joe cool comes up yeah yeah no i'm, I'm yeah. the more the merrier Good what's up joe cool uh, it's just, just waking up, having my coffee. Yeah, the first stream yard I saw open, I have no idea what you're talking about or anything. I don't know if I'm interrupted. I have no idea. I just hopped up here. I did hear you say about the Wu flu, how they, the thousands they got in Chicago. They started at 60,000. It was up to 90,000 per Wu flu. Oh, oh, really? Because I, I thought they said, like, and I think it was in places in New York, they would, these average hospitals, maybe it was locally here. But it'd be thirteen thousand just for treating someone with it. That's why everyone had it because they would make more money. But if somebody died with it, they gave them nineteen thousand. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe it was the death. It, it, it was they were getting sixty or sixty-five thousand. It was ninety some thousand. We were keeping up track with it. Mm -hmm. So, so here's an interesting thing. In a lot of these big cities, especially in New York, do you remember when they came out with they they needed to bring in all these nurses? these traveling yes, nurses and they're paying them so much money. Yeah. So what happens is you get, and I remember all the, like there's a bunch of videos, these, these nurses crying saying that they don't let us advocate for our patients. They're killing these patients. I remember and, she, that too. and she was like, this woman was in tears. And I'm thinking to myself, you just think of the average person, you give them enough money, they will betray their own fellow citizens for the, to, for that purse, for that bag. They'll well, do it in a heartbeat. When that first happened, all the doctors and nurses, uh, they had said that it, it's illegal or it was illegal to attribute someone's death to the wrong thing. I mean, it was a mm -hmm. big deal. No one would do it willingly. This time when they said anyone who has that, uh, friends had it, even if you, you don't know if they just have a heart problem, breathing, it's all to be attributed. The doctors and the nurses all said they were gonna quit. They give them enough money, suddenly the hospital's back in the black, they can pay their bills and shit. And that's so bad. And this, That's this really is all in the, uh, isn't this all in the, like, how things are coded? Like, uh, like it's very nuancy how, you know, you yes. can make one diagnosis or one uh, visit to the hospital and the treatment thereof become something else just by the way yes. that you code and, and bill for it. A woman, a nurse famously uh, did that. She was showing where they were putting a different code into the machine and she lost her job and she got famous for making that video. So you probably own something. And, and she was like, but the code they got us in saying it has the bug. And, but, but he doesn't. Uh, and she brought it to a couple of nurses and she was wearing an undercover camera when she did yep. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wanda says, good to see you smoking Joe. Um, hey Wanda, how you doing, man? So this is, I'm, I'm kind of glad you hopped in too. Cause, and I'm kind of glad we're opening this up to people's experiences and Craig, and I'm, thank you for being magnanimous in this. And I understand you just recovered from a long, a long trip of doing stuff in a funeral and you're pretty tired. I think you'd messaged me almost 2 a.m. in the morning <laughs> uh, late. that you were home safe. And so I'm, I'm exactly. happy that you showed up to the show. And if, and if you need to bow out, you bow out whenever you need oh, to. Oh, you need me to bow out. If you guys no, no, no. got something going on. No, no, no. But well, we're just, this is just, this is actually just frequently asked questions. Um, and, and fact, the madness is my, my special, he's my co-host to it. So okay. that's kind of where we get the name of it. But actually, Joe, it, the, the beautiful thing about this is that, I, I kind of was ready to cancel the show this morning because I had I had no energy, low energy, and then we just started talking before the show, 
you know, and we just like, all right, Men I got this question. Men make plans and God laughs, but exactly. go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> so, so the interesting thing for me is like, A, and let's continue to watch a little bit of this video, but let's, let's put a pin in all the stuff about the traveling nurses, about how they coded uh, for the, the – now re, let's not forget, and somebody hopefully will bring this up in the chat if we forget from the panel, dying with COVID – I'm sorry, dying with Wu flu or dying from the Wu flu. Those are part of the little how they would obfuscate things, right? Uh, like if you had comorbidities and all this other stuff, but you came in with and 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 the weird thing is the Wu flu somehow mysteriously killed the flu. It did. I had it just disappeared. I'm sure, I got a picture somewhere of the stats. The flu just <laughs> died for a couple of years. That's right. Yeah, it's like it's interesting. It's it's a it's a voracious voracious eater of even other uh, even it flu. kills other bugs. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna um, so we're gonna go ahead and play this for a little bit. Like Jim Acosta, I, I meant like uh, like USA Today, a few other play, yeah. places. Yeah, and they're talking of, of, about ivermectin. Right? Yeah. So what? Because I don't know. I just saw so much news yeah. about you. I mean, I would talk to you and then check on you and see if you're all right. And you're like, <laughs> you 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 threw the kitchen sink at it. You said, yeah. which was stuff that you know you took. IV drips and was it mono what mono monoclonal antibodies there and that, what is monoclonal monoclonal antibodies that was actually doing real well in my local area here in, in uh. Kentucky um they discontinued it almost like a month and a half two months after I mean I was sick as a dog I don't know if some of you don't know it but for like four months man you remember you're talking about how it was so painful for you for the from the coughing and you can get couldn't get any relief from it Craig uh. yeah I was crawling at one point in time this was probably almost two years ago now I was crawling, you know, the yoga pose, not the, the opposite of downward dog where you're kind of you're arched and you're pointing your head towards the ceiling and your belly's on the ground that I was crawling on my on my carpeted <laughs> floor in front of my wife coughing in so much pain felt like my ribs were cracking from like just racking yeah. and cracking. And my wife was like, that's it. We're taking you to the ER. And I'm like, what the fuck are they going to do for me? They're they're either they're going to try to put me on a you. ventilator and kill yes. me or yeah, exactly. I'm like, they're going to just send me home and get some money because they treated you know fuck those people in the and ventilator part, days you'd have died too because it turned out 90 something percent of those people died yeah that what uh people who who became who got, who got a ventilator uh, if oh, you wow. remember in the beginning they had the military bringing in ventilators and it yeah. turned out it was a death sentence once they put you on that damn thing and they stopped doing it i knew it was high i knew like once you get to that stage it it wasn't necessarily uh, good. <laughs> right. All right. Well, it's never good to have to go on a ventilator um, in general. But so, again, none of us are doctors. Uh, we don't pretend yes. to be doctors. None of us yes. stayed at a Holiday Inn. That's our caveat. Uh, no one's giving you medical advice. Ask your doctor. Consult I'm your doctor at all times. Sucky cop watcher is what I do. And so you don't <laughs> even want my advice on that. <laughs> we're, just, we're just asking questions, man. That's all we're doing. We're using the Socratic method here. We're just Huzzah. asking questions. So I'm going to continue to let this play here for a second. But yeah, the monoclonal. Clonal. Hard today. I'll write it. I'll write it out for you. Mono. Okay. Phonetically. Clonal. Yeah. The shit they gave Trump. Okay. Yeah. And then what? So who said, or did you already Mono want? I've okay, it. Like, well, I have this guy on Dr. Pierre Corey, and he is, uh, what is the organization? He's from Frontline Crit COVID Critical Care Workers. He's a. Uh, well-established doctors treat who's, who's thousands of people that? with COVID. I was so many shows. Early it's on Joe's show. Wow, I'm shocked. That was wow. Joe's on the show. <laughs> on the pandemic, yep. they found some good uh, efficacy with uh, with with um, ivermectin. Okay, put a point in that. All right, I'm going to put a pin in that. I want to try to find. And if anyone else finds like a video, uh, mods out there, if you find some video on the side, if you have the ability to have multiple things open, if you find a video of a pharmaceutical and, and pay attention, guys, from here on out, whenever you see that big pharma doing the little commercials, when they're warning you about anti parasiticals, what, how you doing, Maria? Good to see you this morning. When they're warning you about don't take this if you have a parasitical infection, I've never, ever heard them say that in the last decade until about two years ago. Mm -hmm. But suddenly, all of a sudden, we get this chimeric M mRNA, like DNA changing. They're turning us into like weird freaking chi a chimera is basically uh, for those that don't understand what chimeric is or chimera is. Um, 
Would you like to take a stab at that? It's uh, a joining of two uh, different uh, creatures. Right. And uh, so they can even be mythical in some type of places. You have uh, a fish they call chimera. Uh, all right, there, mm -hmm. uh, it's probably a shitty explanation, but it is the literal joining of uh, two different species. Or it could be a human and a species. They'll call that a chimera. Mm -hmm. Okay, is this, go. is this like at a molecular level or like at a... Yes, at a, a atomic level, level, molecular the level. DNA. Yeah. Like into your DNA. It's yeah. like, uh, do you remember how like a lot of the, the Wu flu, uh, the, the, the Fauci ouchie had like uh, um, fetal tissue in it and all kinds of, I mean, look at all the babies they're aborting and they're celebrating all these, these babies like Jericho. So what Green. is that metal? What's that metal in the, uh, in the jab? They got some metal. Mer like mercury, wasn't is it? Is it mercury? It could be mercury. I mean, have, have you ever, there's a reason why you don't put a baby into the microwave even with th without putting a fork inside their belly and then putting them in a microwave you know it doesn't w doesn't end well for the baby so imagine if you put i mean humans are like 70 70 percent water right Ref roughly well, yeah it was 70 plus yeah have you if a you've lot. ever put yeah if you've ever put something in the microwave that doesn't have a lot of water in it like uh let's say try to try to try to heat up bacon fat without any water in it it takes forever. It doesn't even barely even heat up. It barely even reacts to the That's, microwave. I spray a little water on my shit because it makes it yep. happen so much faster. Exactly. Um. Yeah. So, but if you put some now, imagine and, and what a microwave has been out since the the probably the prototype was in the early, the mid fifties, maybe early sixties. For certainly, uh, late eighties or early nineties, we had them. Everybody. Oh, had for them. sure. Uh, so imagine that kind of technology. Now imagine that they had the ability to aim something at you that would agitate the water inside the human biome and geome inside your body, and then they're throwing all these metals into it. There is a lot of, and since you said throw metals into it, there's something called uh, uh, intentional water. It's where you put the frequency, because now we know that water holds information and all of that. You pump a certain frequency into it, and that's what you drink. Uh, and they also know that uh, if you put certain metals in there and you put frequencies to it, it'll change the way the metal behaves. You can get all different uh, pictures and, and uh, movements of the way this metal behaves when you put a frequency to it or vibration, same thing. Uh, so they can inject some uh, metal into you and it's good to sit on this on uh, Parkinson's. It's really good stuff where they took uh, and they put some metal in that too and they took this stuff and they pumped some fluid into the people's brain. Then they would point a, a, a beam at it and change the frequency and it would stop them from shaking. And this was old. We, me and some friends looked this up. I think this was the genesis of this. Now they're putting it in everybody and it's joining with your RNA, not your DNA. The, everything you've had up to now been fucking with your DNA. This joins with your RNA, which I'm not sure what it does. It looks like it's that camera shit that dudes onto. They're trying to join something to you, and then they can manipulate it with a frequency. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Hey, Joe, can you read that? Uh, Some really uh, smart guy in our audience put that. Uh, the American engineer uh, Percy Spencer is generally credited with inventing the modern microwave oven after World War II from uh, radar technology developed during the war named the radar range in 1947 i remember that it was as big as a car i remember that yeah. so interesting now imagine the technology that don't they, they talk about having a, like a heart attack ray gun yes they they can... supposedly the, the three letter people have those oh yeah oh yeah that's where all your nasa money's going that big slush fund. <laughs> it's, it's going it's it we didn't go to the moon folks we didn't go to the moon that's another story my girl would love it. He's like, yeah. <laughs> we didn't man okay so let's, let's, let's check this out um i mean it i mean it's interesting i'm not i don't hate people that say we did go to the moon but uh, so in genetics a chimera is an organism or tissue that contains at least two different sets of dna most often originated from the fusion of as many different zygotes. Uh, the term is derived from the chimera of Greek mythology, a fire-breathing monster that was part lion, part goat, part dragon. In botany, a chimera is a plant or animal, I'm sorry, a plant or plant part that is a mixture of two or more genetically different types of cells. And human chimeras can happen naturally when a fetus absorbs its twin. So, so think about they're putting fetal tissue into the ouchie the the fauci ouchie yes why wouldn't it combine with your shit on a dna level or an rna level in this case so, so they're 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 trying to force chimeric change intracellularly like very good very good you know right chimeric change into us intracellularly by with the woo flu right very good. so all right, 
Let's listen a little bit more. Frontline 19 Critical Care Alliance. Yeah. Um, so I had him on, and you know, he had talked to me about it. Not, he's not the only doctor that told me to take it. Multiple doctors told me to take it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's supposed to have uh, – what is the exact thing it's supposed to do? There's, there's something that I highlighted. Um, now, listen to the way he sounds right now. He sounds like me. Now, I've not taken anything to get rid of the Wu flu, right? Um, haven't taken any of the stuff that would actually effectively work. Yeah. Meaning, I haven't, here, let's make us bigger here for a second. I, I haven't taken anything that would actually um, effectively cancel it out of my body. And, and, and if you listen to a lot of the people, now, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I would be, I'm, I'm an independent, registered independent. But I tend to listen to people that are willing to have open conversations. And frankly, a, a lot of people on the left are in an echo chamber that they refuse to. And a lot of people on the hard agree. right are in a bit of an echo chamber, a I little less so. That, a little less than the people on the far left. But that said, the people, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's a very narrow thing. You're right, Craig. So here's, but the interesting thing is, have you guys noticed a lot of the people that you listen to, like Tim Pool or, you know, whoever you might be listening to that might be considered to be a little bit more like open minded? They all sound sick. They all sound like they have a sinus infection and, and snot in the back of their throat that they can't of get that. rid of. And these are the people that are more prone to not want to get the jab. So you have to ask yourself the question, is there a vector of attack? Is there the people that did get the jab? Are they protected from something, but more prone to something else down the line that will be absolutely decimating them? I would believe that second part of that statement, the first part, are they protected more than other people? I'm not even sure that that is true. Um, it, it looks like if you, uh, I don't know if this makes sense or not, but the numbers, uh, when they put us on lockdown and all of that, they were saying one in, this will kill one in 10 people. Mm -hmm. And they had a counter on the screen, how many millions are dying. Um, and then a college did a study uh, that found out it was way, their numbers were way off. And then another college and another college. And then California did the first famous one. And they found out that 90 something of people had already had the uh, antibodies, which mean they'd already, and these are the people that seem to be fucking gods and don't get sick from it. And that's when everybody lowered it, the WHO and the, the other one who used to keep the numbers, they both NIH. lowered it. Uh, no, no, not that one. Uh, uh, just, w, just, no, we got the, the uh, World Health WHO Organization and the CDC. CDC, uh, okay. Yeah, they dropped their numbers to uh, more akin or even less than the the regular flu. Uh, it would look like if you got your antibodies uh, normally, naturally, like you would have, then uh, you don't have these Joe Rogan problems and shit. Looks like people like you or whoever got that early something. It looked like it stays with you and keeps you down or something. They call it like basically long COVID, uh -huh. which is interesting because, and Craig, I, I'm going I'm to open the floor to you because it looks like you got something interesting you want to say here in a second. But here, so I want you to think about something. A lot of people don't realize that, but good old uh, St. Fauci, right? Now, now here, this is interesting. A, if that guy's Sicilian, Sicilian an Italian like me, I'll eat this freaking hat. I guarantee he, he has absolutely no Italian blood in him. I guarantee you that he wears a really small hat that doesn't block any sun out of his eyes. Okay? So stop pretending you're an Italian dude, first off. And the family name of Fauci, is it's, it's Sicilian for sickle. That's a reaper. Now think about this. I don't believe in coincidence. You mean like, like a sickle? sickle. <laughs> yeah, like a scythe. Like a, like a small scythe. Like a hand, mm -hmm. a hand scythe. Instead of like, a, like a, you know, the reaper. The, you know, death. Um, so sickle, so Fauci means sickle. <coughs> so, so here's the interesting thing. He was part of the nouveau, nouveau on the scene weird thing that no one really understood. It was called HIV AIDS. I remember that. He was part of that. He, he was the young doctor. Yeah. And now he's over here doing this other the novo coronavirus yes. so you know history seems to have a, a rhyme to it if it doesn't exactly repeat uh i got one i know craig is your turn but but to for what he said uh they said that 
Uh, shoot, I forgot about it. All right, go ahead, Craig. It was a stat well, behind. Well, let me let me just let me put a pin in this real quick. I'm sorry, Craig, but here's here's where here's where it matters. When they were trying to do all this like testing in the level level four containment lab, they couldn't figure out why it wouldn't jump from mammal to mammal. It it just stayed on bats. Mm -hmm. So what they did was, and you can look this up, folks. Um, it, it would take a little while for me to find the information again. Um, but look it up for yourself. Anything that has a U.S. or any kind of a world patent is man-made by design. And, and if it's patented, it's man-made. Because you, pat you can't patent nature, right? I mean, exactly. Yeah. So th this this Nuvo uh, coronavirus has four HIV insets added to it. HIV insets in order to make it jump and stay with man. That so was long it. COVID, AIDS. Someone, someone clipped uh, Fauci saying that... Uh, how dangerous it is to take a vaccine when you always already have the antibodies. Uh, and then they clip him later on saying that, yes, you should go out and get all these boosters and all of that. And one of the reporters or whoever's interviewing them asked them, <laughs> what about the dangers of, uh, if they are, if they already have the antibodies, uh, what about the dangers of that? And he deflected, but he went 180 degrees on that. If you always had antibodies, you can only hurt yourself uh, by taking this. And the chick was like, well, why don't people do tests before they give you the jab to see if you have the antibodies? And wouldn't know why to answer that shit. I wasn't, I didn't have anything like, uh, like you know, groundbreaking. But when Joe, <laughs> when, when Joe Cool first started talking, he was talking about something that occurred to us that was very significant in the recent past, you know, 2019, whatever, COVID-19, or 19, whatever. And all of the things that we went through and how elusive even on our own. The ouchie Fauci. Yes. You're going to get me shut down. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> or the Fauci but, ouchie. But, but that we that we went through it and all those changes that we went through, but still we, it, it's not so clear in our mind what it actually we had to take and what the name of it was and, and what the, what the uh, symptoms were, you know, it and, and it wasn't, and it wasn't even that long ago. <laughs> yes. So. You know, because they cut everything off except uh, what they wanted you to take uh, from uh, Pfizer. So yeah. all of these things, the other things were immediately uh, cast dispersions upon and called horse injections and shit and taken off the market as as woo woo drugs uh, because they wanted their shit, in my opinion. So we don't know the uh, we didn't have enough case study in the other other medicines to know how effective they would have been. All right. So uh, just a little bit of background. My wife used to do trials, uh, clinical trials. She was part of that where she would do in, in this local area. She was a yeah. um so they would, and these things would take years and in some cases, even decades to do blinds, double blinds, sometimes even a triple blind on if that's a thing or not. But, um, the whole operation warp speed right now, listen, man, if you don't die, this whole thing was designed, planned probably at least five years ago, if not a decade ago, they had the design for it. All they had to do is ramp up the manufacturing and they appealed to Donald Trump's ego by saying, Hey, you, you can be the guy. fastest president in the world to get this out and you can claim it. So he's like, Oh, Operation he Warp Speed. Right on it. That's and right. he just, yeah, he just, he just deep throated that whole freaking narrative. Deep it would have taken five, six years just to start to get the numbers and shit before you could even okay this thing. There is not such thing as an 18th month. It's safe. Go. That is not even a thing. Yeah. So it was already made. Is So I asked the question is if what Joe is saying is, uh, re replicatable with his theory of you don't just instantly get to put these things out in 18 months, something that would normally would have taken five, six, seven, eight years, no matter how much effort you put into it, it's not right. going to happen. So this has right. already been pre-planned forward, forward planned. And we all know that the government doesn't, the, the government's not, the government's the Titanic. It's not a speedboat. It doesn't yes. turn on a dime. It takes time for it to, to really turn and get, get where it needs yes. to go. So you got to plan a decade in advance. I mean, it's logistics, we, right? We know it was because the contracts that were signed uh, went through the Department of Defense. And you can now see those contracts that says the, uh, the Pfizer and them can't be sued for the people who die or whatever. But mm -hmm. those things predate the, the the dropping of the bug itself. They all the contracts were signed before it became known to us as it's a real thing. So, are of course, there, they were put. Sorry, are you saying there won't be any litigation against them for anything because it can't be they, through the department of defense they can't be held liable that's why they particularly went 
through their contracts go to the Department of Defense. They will not we be did, allowed. We did sign a bunch of paperwork if, if and when you took it. Uh, oh, like, you know, lots of verbiage. <laughs> interesting. I didn't know that at all. No one ever told me that. Yeah, it's. I'm kind of glad I was out of the military by then. Um, and and so so again, this is all by design. So I ask these are the questions I ask. If this, then why? And we might be getting far afield of where I wanted to kind of stay, but I'm going to try to. While you guys are talking here, I'm going to try to look up a video of a pharmaceutical where it gives the disclaimer: don't take these medicines if you're if you have a parasitical infection. I'm going to try to do some research because I had never heard that verbiage ever, right. ever. And right. they cover. They, I mean, they'll go like, you know, they have they did they do the speed talk at the yeah, end, right now, at, at the end, right where they list yeah. all the. Uh, they yeah. might not cause heart loss, heart failure, yeah. disease, so to... Yeah, and all that <laughs> stuff sounds way worse than the crap you're giving it to me for. But, all uh, right, yeah. I had a headache. You gonna fucking kill me? Exactly. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> my I, cute I, in them jeans. <laughs> I gotta look Come up. Come on, uh, here. <laughs> Look up what uh why not to take it if you have a sudden certain bacterial infection that would be interesting. But I think GS is on to something uh with the once you put something in there, because we are liquid, uh mm -hmm. you can point a, a frequency at it. I think that's where he was going to get to behave in certain ways. It's been proven with that Parkinson's. Okay. Look that shit up myself. Sorry, my dog's barking. So, so well, here's the interesting thing. You you alluded to this earlier, and uh, I find this to be interesting, Joe and and Craig and yeah. audience, right? So, now for those of you that have read the Bible, or at least uh, in the beginning, there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, what's a word? It's a vibration, right? So, when I speak a vibration into existence, right? <laughs> And so what Joe was talking about is they can they can hit your the water in your body because water has memory, right? It, that it, was and, so dope. And so, but I mean, listen, I mean this this is I'm not trying to make it like I'm not trying to thump people with the Bible, but um, no, no. Tesla got in trouble for for making a mini earthquake with vi the right if you have the right resonance against the right object the everything everything's in movement everything's in motion everything moves of course and if you can figure out that then this is why they said that they probably figured out a way to cut stone and stack stone the way that they made the pyramids i assume it was through vibration too i don't assume right. aliens had to come they they follow vibration i think it's a lost art because i mean if you look at the egyptians the egyptians <laughs> used to do um they used to take the remove the skull pop it open without anesthesia mind you Mm -hmm. And do op open, open they used to brain surgery. surgery back yeah. then. That's correct. Yeah. And then there's like they, they say the Library of Alexander had so much information that was lost. I don't know. Some people say it's in the Vatican. Some people that's say, a, I mean, the there's Vatican a lot of information out there. underground in the Vatican. That's what I hear. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to try to find that. Um, look, we can go off on a million different tangents. Craig, go ahead, man. You, you listen, you're gonna have to be rude. You're gonna have to bump in here, man. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I got just stuff. Say, could you imagine how many things that we that we could uh, see or be exposed to if if the Vatican opened up those vaults or if the oh. you know, if our country and, and opened here, up those vaults. <laughs> here's what I hear too: when they do grant certain people access to those files and stuff, you're not allowed to just wander and look and see what they see. You have to know the document is in there, know what it is, and then they'll tell you where it is. And that's the only one you can look at. What if you could just go in and just look at it all sorts of shit, all the secrets and shit. and that vibration um i always say that when uh people are gonna find jesus and not know it because i think jesus literally is love uh, uh mercy forgiving uh uh, 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 un uh unconditional love i think all these things have a certain vibration to them and i think you can find that vibration and find jesus and stuff so when you're saying jesus because we know jesus with this in the beginning jesus is the word mm -hmm. it would help me believe that you know you don't even have to know his name and he died and what year he died and he was from here and there you don't have to know that if you can find that frequency you found jesus you're that forgiving loving if you vibrating there that is jesus himself and he's part of you uh, you know i'll be throwing that in my head i'm glad that uh i'm glad that edified you a little bit because it helped and, me a lot well and, and the bible also says that to speak about those things that aren't as though they were 
right? So meaning if, if, if you're unhealthy, speak health into your body, right? Like um, you don't, can create. Right. You can manifest yeah. it. You can vibrate it into place, right? Um, and yeah. also talks about that the power of death, life and death are on the tongue. Mm-hmm. So you, you can you can breathe life to love. You can breathe death to hate. Yes. You know, There's by speaking. Me. Right. Yeah. So so it's interesting to me, like uh, when someone will and say, you hey, wouldn't man, be able to kill hate with hate. Don't try that one. Don't do yeah. what they do. Yeah. And, and I and I struggle with that. And, and here's usually here's what I try to do when we get trolls in the channel. I'll do something like this. Now, here, right, talk about a vibration. I want you to see the way that the baby reacts to the vibration of this. Isn't that beautiful yeah that's adorable you just choose joy man but the vibrations of the guitar right like if i played my guitar in the right chords it, you'd be like boy that was beautiful that touched me yes. but if I, I if i had a cat named uh, koi named koi and uh not fixed or anything and during a certain period of time i could say her name or say something I'd say, Koi, what are you doing? She go, Meow. just from yeah. the sound of my deep voice would get her that that uh, yes, feeling throughout yes. her body. I get it. Vibrations are it, just are no joke for sure. I saw mm-hmm. um, where they were playing different frequencies uh, and watching the different uh, the way the water uh, changed and moved around. And we are mostly water, as you pointed out. Imagine that shit. You know, the, it seems logical that the right frequency would have to uh have an effect on you look like certain frequencies that baby dug and uh, it's pretty cool and simple well something something if you ever get if you ever do your own show or something like that and you want to explore it to your share it with your audience look up the rice experiment now i've, I've shown this before um so what they did was they they basically boiled some rice and they had these containers they were all washed the same way and they were all put on the counter and then they put they tried to put it it's not scientific it's just at home science and they put as equal parts of rice in each container as possible. There was a, basically a control was the one that they neglected. They didn't do anything to bless you, Craig. Um, and the, uh, there was the one that they spoke hate to. And then there's one that they spoke love to. Yeah. And, and you could see a, a, a giant change in the one that was spoke positively was more preserved than the one that was negatively spoken to. I've seen several of those with different plants and fruit and stuff, never with rice. And the difference is vast from the control, the one that you spoke bad to and good. It's not a small difference. It's a big difference, a notable yeah. difference. But, but it's, and it's interesting too, because a lot of people think that the opposite of love is hate. I think it's indifference. I think, I don't know if I heard you say that, but someone said that and I've been on board ever since, man. Yeah, I, th- I think it's right. indifference because, I mean, it can is. you imagine if someone was indifferent to your suffering you know, or your joy? Yeah. So yeah. I think that's be- I think that's a beautiful thing. So not a problem. So I'm trying to find uh, I'm trying to find commercials um, in 2024 here. Uh, let me see. Review of pharma commercials at Super Bowl. And let's see. That was two months ago. So let's try that. And hold on. Let me see if I can share this. I'm trying. I I haven't found it. I'm not prepared for this, guys. But this is just something that's been bouncing around in my skull for a couple of minutes now. While pharma typically doesn't have a large ad presence at the Super Bowl, there are always a few in attendance on game day. This probably at Super Bowl it. 58 Morning, this year, Astellas Pharma will drop a TV spot for its newly approved menopause drug. Okay, that's not what I was thinking it would be. Um, Pfizer's big game commercial. Here's the science. Yeah, Pfizer. I guess they had a commercial. Oh, I'm not even sharing it. I'm so sorry. That's going to get me. I can't play that. I noticed how after all these uh, news back in the day when it was really big and stuff, every Mm -hmm. after you see a news show talking about how deadly everything was or whatever, it was always this segment brought to you by Pfizer. Way back then, uh, Pfizer was on top of it, bro. 
Uh, well, I mean, at some point in time, when evil tells you what it is and who it is and what it's planning on doing, you might want to take it at its word. So we're going to go back to um, I just want listen, I just want you guys to pay attention to if you do happen to watch some mainstream media and you do happen to see some CNN and some big pharma. Um, I'm trying to find these these commercials, uh, drug commercials. Maybe I'll do yeah. drug commercials 2024. Craig, I put, you, I put one in the link, but or in the uh, private chat, but it doesn't have the warning. But it's basically t warning people. Yeah, about you might want to uh, say drug commercial warning, a drug commercial side effect, and then it'll, they'll probably specify on that little part you're talking, you're looking for. I the end. Ivermectin warning at end of drug commercial. commercial. Yeah, be specific. I, I gave like, you a link in the private chat. You can check it out. Like, only like Craig, is that your name, Craig? Yeah. I had right. a friend who swears by that. The more specific you are, Joe, the more results. She's a big. Uh, proponent of that. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm generally specific. Hey, GS. Yes, sir. Oh, all right. I, I just wanted to say, man, uh, uh, I, I know in the chat, damn it, we got off on the wrong foot. I do not want to uh, repeat that, which is why I've been kind of hesitant and, and shit to uh, hop up here. Now, I want you to know that. Uh, uh, I get wild and ramp boxes and say crazy things. It's got more to do with the way I was raised and the cat I am now, right? Uh, well, I understand. Uh, uh, I look, uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of holding grudges, man. Uh, I, man, that's all it takes me either. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. And, and look, we might disagree two months from now. And, we will uh, disagree today before it's over with. We'll disagree, but I don't want to end nothing, man. I'm an easygoing guy. Yeah. So I always try to leave room for uh, a return to um, sanity, I guess would be the right the right word. I always try to leave room for someone to because, uh, listen, if I if I can't forgive, then how can my heavenly father above forgive me? If I if I hold unforgiveness in my heart to my yes, fellow man, then how can I expect my father to forgive me? My and how can I be a kid of my dad? He's famous for that. If it's not in me. Amen. Amen. Well said. So what again, are we looking at apple flavored paste. So this is ivermectin. This is actual horse paste for this is for worms. what you would give to your your animals if they Remotes have a worms paste. and bots with a single dose. I'm not sure what a bot is. Like a bot fly. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. No, no, it's logical. Poisoning after taking a horse deworming drug to try and treat COVID nineteen. Both the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control have issued warnings to not take the drug ivermectin. It is a so. So here's an, an, and I'm gonna, and I'm going to throw this out, right? Yeah. So listen, um, I'm going to make this a little bigger here. So understand that. Look at every. Look at how many people thought yesterday was going to be the end of the world. Yes. You know, and I made podca podcasts kind of like mocking it almost in a way. I've got to troll niggas to no end today, bro. <laughs> right. Uh, so for me, it's like it's just kind of like, you know, what are you what are you afraid of? First off, what do you why? And, th and that's the thing you got to be you got to understand it's problem, reaction, solution. It's the yes. alien dialectic. Right. So I think of how much money the the consumer body made for people a pump filling up all their gas cans everything they they're all panic everyone's buying batteries everyone's buying candles everyone's buying water. food everyone's yeah. buying water everyone's i mean just think of how much of a boost that was of a transfer of wealth to you know because everyone yeah. was panicking Today, and they, they just keep rain. doing this i mean joe you're old enough to remember what uh acid rain yes <laughs> remember the the gypsy moth caterpillar invasion uh, the evasion of the ozone uh, layer was it the beetles uh, was going to eat all the trees the ozone layer ozone uh, layer. No, it's the gypsy moth caterpillars you remember them i remember them it was a bug that looked like a ladybug too that was supposed to just eat and kill every tree it was called yeah. a beetle but it looked like a ladybug and it was going to i think i know what you're nature. talking about and they get in the yeah. dog's mouths too it's pretty nasty actually they'll, uh, they'll infest dog's mouths like I've the seen killer bees the killer bees were coming yep. to north yep. america and we're going to kill us all the ozone layer they had all the women in the 80s with their big hair and their hairspray, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the you arm shit, we had to stop using spray deodorant. You know, right. we get uh, more people uh, reacting more to the uh, a plane being delayed than the timely 
calculated arrival of a in an eclipse and people freaked out <laughs> but yeah. i was gonna I you've was gonna been known this you. for years you know yeah i mean it wasn't <laughs> as if it was a surprise i mean it came at the time that it was supposed to it did what it was supposed to do i mean i i think i saw somebody say something like it was underwhelming I, it, it might have been you i but thought it was pretty it, incredible. i mean it was i mean even when we were driving liza was like uh it you can see it, but it's like you know, really nothing. And I've seen one before Listen, in, my life, in you, 2017, but no, no, that, yeah. that's nothing. You got to get the hundred percent, man. I'm telling you, you can't even uh, satisfy for uh, 95 percent. You uh, what that hundred percent was with a really dark. I'm sure the upper 90s was still great too, because it looked like dark above you, and you can look at the low horizon and see it look like it's daylight still. But those effects were rare. Most people in the in the in line it was just like the regular eclipses we've been seeing all of our fucking lines. Mm -hmm. yeah. They barely even notice the day changes, man. Mm. Yeah, John Delacola, what's up? Good to see you in the chat. He says, Feels "Don't good. forget the Russian good. nuclear weapon conflict." Yeah, that was another uh, the Cold War. Yeah, um, it's just the Ice Age, the heat wave. The I mean, ice, every ten uh, years, every decade, they come uh, out with some new tragedy to get y'all. Yellowstone up. is supposed to blow up and kill everybody. Yeah. <laughs> the Yellowstone so, volcano. And, and I think it might have be been about uh, about uh, two minutes, guys. Just so you know. All right, all right, Craig. So I think it might have been me with the community we'll post. By the way, I did the underwhelming. Go ahead, Craig. You got the you got the last. It was you. Minutes. It was you. Uh, I, I did see something on there, and I wanted to see if you could bring it up on the the commercial. Is it a calculation? Where they are they trying to say that it's? I think it says something about formulated for up to like twelve hundred pounds or something like that. Is that what they're and, trying and to say? Is the difference is? Well, that that's it, what, as far as we, that's what I was trying to explain. It? Well, you got to understand, there are people that are gonna they're gonna run this way, and then they're gonna run that way. I mean, if right. you, if anyone's ever raised chickens. And I could, I could, I could put scratch grain on the ground over here. It's, it's the same scratch grain, but the second I let some more out of my hand and a different, they all come running to that place. And then oh, I put yeah. them over there and they all come running to that, even though there's the same shit on the ground just, over there yeah. and there's no competition, all the hens want what, what the new stuff is that I just threw on the ground. So, so it's, it, that's human behavior that I've noticed for people that listen, people, people say that they want to be free. Most people don't want to be free. Most people want to be told what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and why to do it. They want schedule. They want they want they, they want boundaries. That, yeah. yeah, there is a comfort in that. There's absolutely a comfort in that. So what happens is when someone says, "Don't take this because it's it's a horse paste uh, for a de dewormer," it's it's not going to help you. And then they don't trust the government on this side, and they're like, "Oh, they don't want us to take it because it'll make us." good so they think oh if a little bit of this is really good then i can really get it out of my system That's if I what a happened. little bit more yeah. and so people were ODing on it and getting yeah. themselves sick because like you said 1250 pounds body yes. weight it's 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 formulated for you know the news knew that when they made that episode there they thought that too that uh it's a horse it's massive they took too much but instead they ran with it like it's just gonna kill you uh, you know, they're insincere. But, well, I mean, even even look at this Chiron too, uh, Craig and Joe. And I know you got to leave here, Craig, but look at this. And I'll, I'll finish this commercial. So, you know, it's the one thing you actually put up for us to actually <laughs> check out. And I've been delaying it. I apologize, brother. But it says 24, 27 Floridians poisoned by horse dewormer. Now, that sounds like dun, dun, dun. Right. Okay. I mean, I could get poisoned. I could technically be poisoned by swallowing too much toothpaste. Uh, you do, it's not going to yeah. kill me. Yeah. But they it, it's it's uh technically true because it says don't swallow maybe harmful if swallowed so that's a level of poisoning if i'm poisoned one one thousandth of a percentage and it's not going to kill me i'm still technically poisoned so they're not lying to you they're just freaking deceiving you so let's yes. go ahead and continue to watch it and then let we'll let uh craig have a response to whatever he wants to say after that a medication meant for livestock not humans the Florida Poison Control Center says it already treated 27 patients who took that drug this month. This is how you know you were right. It didn't say they died. They came right. in bleeding from the mouth. It didn't say that, right? It's like when people put Visine on your food, makes you sick or something. They think it's a troll and, you know, you poisoned me with Visine, though. I don't think you no know, one's dying from it. Yeah, I think you get like you get like liquid diarrhea or something like that from it. It's like uh, putting yeah. soap in your soap and water. Yes, ahead, but Craig. they call it poison. Sorry, Craig. I right. No, no, you're he's, good. He's got some hustling to do. He's got to catch up on. 
I'm so I got to catch up on uh, having been gone, but uh, it was good to to hang out with you guys. Uh, I was just going to say two things or one or two things, whatever, but uh, J- just one, though, Greg, just one thing, just one no. thing. Uh, All right. Maybe two. I, maybe two. We got one. We got one thing. Nobody go anywhere. Two <laughs> things. Uh, this man has got to sell some stuff on eBay. Let's delay this man. Come on. Right. We got one thing. We got one thing. Do we have two? Do we have two? Do we have two? Better got two. Got a two. Do I hear a two, Joe? Joe, cool. They call heart attacks. We got two. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead Where's the mute button? No. So. <laughs> Uh, and we have had uh, we you and I have had our agreements, disagreements and our, you know, our fluidity and what we've done. But we made a conscious decision a couple of weeks ago or last week about the types of things that we would and would not talk to. Look at the ratio of what we have on the show and what we didn't have to work, go through and still have a show. Wait, 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 yeah. wait. No way you're going to end kind on of a, that, Craig. That's kind of an you, inside joke. <laughs> Craig, when you, you come back, I want to discuss that you guys feel are, you're not men enough. You have to avoid certain topics because you may, uh, you know, get emotional or something. So we can't talk yeah. about them. That's not a thing in the real world. And when you get more time, I want to talk about that. Hold on. Okay. I want to see if I can hold on. I want to see if I can move myself and turn myself into so, Oreo. So it could be that. Can I, can I move? <gasps> I can. I'm an Oreo. Yeah. So that, it's funny that you say that because I have, I don't go to where I was born in Indiana ah, for, for quite, quite a long time. But my stepbrother, who he's my brother, you know, I love him. We love the same man. But uh, he said, first of all, my stepsister said, what is she feeding you? And he said, I can visibly see how much, how much, how happy you are <laughs> because oh, I've gained so much weight. <laughs> so, and I eat, I eat Oreo cookies and milk uh, many times. Me too. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I love you. All right, I love you guys. Got you guys I, I got to get going. Nice meeting right. you, man. But we will talk about that, Joe. Uh, Don't I, forget. I, I, I won't forget. Yeah, I will. I've been yeah, on a panel before when you were uh, – you you watch uh, and and uh, hang out with AB a lot, AWB, right? I didn't watch Black. Uh, I, I, yeah. Is that the guy in the mornings? Yeah, I watch yeah, him in the mornings. Yeah. So I've been on a show when you were there before. So, But, yeah. you know, we're, we'll, we'll come across each other fast again. It's nice having you for sure. Yeah, we'll be guys- over here. I'll see you. All right, you guys take care. Well, he Thank has you. his own channel too, Joe. All right, bye bye. Fact, the uh, fact, the madness. All right, I'm yeah. sub. Yeah, well, I'll have. I'm gonna. We're gonna link it in the. Uh, we'll yeah, what do you guys put in the regular chat? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Let's yep. go, mods. Right. You guys take All care. Right. Take care. All right, easy, pal. Yep. I'm gonna sub up a uh, dude right quick. So I got. Yeah. So this. I mean, it'd be it'd be kind of cool if you guys be on the same channel too. Like he might do some interviews and stuff like that. He'd be a good interviewer because he did. I talk too much for it to be an interviewer. He seems like with his energy and yours, how is anything off topic? Seems like you guys are way too smart mm-hmm. to fall into a trap where you can't talk about politics or something. So it's interesting. So I'm gonna allude to what it is that he was talking about. Um. Because we were we we stayed afterwards after I put shut down the stream, yeah. we stayed in and we talked. And I said, I said, hey, listen, next week I, I really don't want to talk about this race stuff, man. Uh, and and it irritates me because just because I have a black person in my as as my co-host, everyone, right, we'll wants, talk about race. everyone wants to talk about race. And, and listen, yeah. and there's a reason for it because I think we're hungry to have this open dialogue exactly. and open conversation. Exactly. Yes. That said, though, it makes me. It doesn't uncomfortable is not the right word because i don't mind being uncomfortable it, it, yeah. i find it very cringy that every yeah. time i have a black person on my on my panel everyone wants to bring up race and i'm like come on man can we can we not can we not you, see past all this i let you maybe defer to i understand it's your show but maybe defer to craig a little bit because there is craig may see the urgency and you shouldn't talk about it all the time it's, it's dumb uh but craig may see more of an urgency and the fact is, there's not a lot of black people on panel, and, and you don't get to have an education of black motherfuckers' point of view, especially an articulate black motherfucker. So it's an opportunity. Just let's not forget that, too. No, ab- absolutely. But it's it's funny because I mentioned that to him, and he's like, I'm glad you said that because I was just about to bring that up to you. That's, so I did, uh, defer, I, I, I did defer to him, um, we and we were, we were simpatico with that. We were, oh, and we were of one mind with that. So are, are you trying to get on YouTube so you can follow him? All right, I'll fill the air. I'm gonna I'll put on some Joe Rogan there. Yeah, I was just I'm sorry, I was just something to do it up. No problem, man. No. All right, Craig. If you're still there, something you up. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, I'm gonna let Joe play here for a minute. Okay. And this is obviously I'm not a doctor. It says I- Ivermectin was found to be a blocker of viral uh replica replicase R E. Replicase? P 
L I C A S E protease and I don't know what this word is. Human T M P R S S two. I don't know. But what they didn't highlight yeah. is that I got better. Yeah, you got better quickly. They tr- so yeah, they they gloss over that, right? And all, <laughs> these, and, and, that small detail. <laughs> and all these doctors that were coming out against this, uh, for instance, I don't know if Jared Rabble is still in the channel or not. Um, but I don't know if you know that about him, but uh his name is uh Justin Justin Dr. Justin Spees. He's actually a doctor. Um, and he's the dreaded Rabble Rouser. I'll bring up I'll show you some of his videos. Uh, and I did like a high noon with him. Technically, I've done like two high noons with him. But I had uh, him and Lawrence Accountability on my show this, I think, this past Friday. We did like an impromptu, didn't plan it. I just, that night, I was like, hey, because these guys got my actual phone number and stuff. So we we do group texts back and forth and yeah, stuff, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Um, But it's like he actually went and... For like almost an entire, well, I think he did it for an entire school year that where they, they instituted these mask mandates on these children. And he's basically saying that that's a hundred percent child abuse. That's just, and he went to council meetings and, and he sat there with signs pretty much every day from a certain, like for like four or five hour span of time, sat out there with snow, sun, shine, rain, cold, hot. And just sat there and did it. And finally, some some women started to kind of show up with him and help him out and kind of protest with him. But he ac- he actually walked the walk, talked the talk. There you, where, go. you know what I mean? And Whether he's right or wrong, I'm already admiring this guy. Exactly. But uh, he was right. And it was uh, about the masks. And he's like, and here, let me let me show you. I'm going to bring up something. We'll listen to Joe here for a second. I'll bring up that video that I'm where he basically went ham on these people at the council meeting. Try to make it seem as if like. I'm doing some wacky shit that's completely ineffective. And right. CNN was saying that I'm a distributor of misinformation. Also, that was the other thing that happened. The um, in Tokyo, in Japan, which is apparently uh, they're very conservative yeah, there he about is. the medication that they they use and the medications that they. Yeah, he's in the channel right there. So um, that's his. If you want to sub the to dreaded- him. Too. Rabble rouser. Okay. No, I'll show you this, dude. Actually, I'll show it to you. I'll show him to you right now. Um, this is this is the actual one. So, uh, uh, so this is him giving them a free speech swirly, which is awesome. So this is the guy who had gotten. He's got like a bunch of lawsuits um, right now against uh, this city. But this, so this is Justin Spees. He's a he's a submariner, or he was a he was a. A retired he's a submarine or veteran of the navy in the navy you can do what you want in the navy i heard that that Probably all right there it is subscribe nice but here listen to this guy he's, he's gonna do this like a boss man they've kicked him out before that's why he's got all these lawsuits so he's coming back to basically rub you know this is the dog. guy this is rebel rouser yeah this is justin right. speech and i'll show you other i'll show you other videos of him here in a minute okay you know, you know when you're potty training a dog not to not to poop on the carpet. You know, yeah. you just kind of take it over and you put its nose in the pee or the yes, poo, yes, yeah. and then you smack it. You say no, no, no. You know, yeah. this is this, this is what's going to happen to the council. That's right here. good. To hear. My name is Dr. Justin Spees. My sign here says Patrick Kelly is a giant pussy. It says this because at last week's school board meeting, he provided another example of how big of a pussy he is. At the meeting, Michael Irvey recorded a conversation he had with Patrick requesting to meet with Patrick in person to discuss a community issue. Patrick declined to meet in person with Michael, stating that he didn't feel safe because of the supposed aggressive tone Michael takes at county meetings. Patrick then expressed that his feelings are what's most important, saying to Michael, quote, you're belittling my feelings as not being true and not being valid. Hey, you name the date. Um, every day except for the sixteenth, Henry. Henry wants to come back on high noon. Absolutely, man. I was just gonna recommend it or ask you if you wanted to. Um, you you let me know the day, and uh, other than the sixteenth, I've got Catherine Henry is going to be on high noon on the sixteenth. Um, she's a. Do you know who Catherine Henry is? I don't think I know her today. She's a constitutional lawyer. Um, she's a a blonde lady. Uh, a bit of a smoke show. Um. From what I understand, she's making the rounds and she's uh, she's been kind of so. When did men start talking about their feelings? Yeah, like just this? reach out to me. Henry. How did this happen to our society? What exactly are you afraid of, Patrick? Your female colleague, Sarah Plinsky, here met with Patrick or met with Michael in person a few months ago. A female has more balls than you, Patrick. Are you <laughs> embarrassed by that? 
these are these are comments that from his video these are con he's reading comments from his his youtube video oh, okay. that the, right. the viewers have put in there uh, anyway michael made a youtube video of his exchange with patrick titled patrick kelly feels too unsafe to meet and is posted on his youtube channel lawrence accountability based on the comment section of the video lots of people agree with me on this so let's read some of the comments on the video one person said the coward and cowardice in this man is embarrassing to all males Another one said, I bet Patrick squats when he pees. Another guy here said, Patrick, you're a condescending F. Grow a pair or let them drop, son. <laughs> this guy here said, this clown definitely gets a lot, got a lot of swirlies and wedgies in school. Another guy here, what an absolute coward. Another post, beta male? No, how's about absolute pussy? What a <laughs> clown. Another person, this is someone who is so readily available to play the victim and it's insulting to actual victims. Damn. Another person here said, what an overpaid, underintelligent simp he is. I'm sad for his wife, who surely realizes this too. I think it would be terrible to know you're married to this, but stick around for her lifestyle, the lifestyle anyway. Shameful. Another one here says, what a wussy that commissioner is. Another one, call him a pussy and give me his number. This one might be my favorite one here. Patrick must wear his mama's panties. <laughs> Another one here, unsafe equals whiny coward. Another guy here said, I'm embarrassed for this guy. He needs to hand in his man card immediately. This is effective. And then this last this one smart. here says, he needs to go back to his mama's basement. If this were my dad, then I would consider that I had two mommies. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Do we have anyone else here for general? <laughs> and then he just walked away. Follow, yeah. He walks away like a pimp, dude. So uh, let me see. Um, so here's another one. Here's a more recent one. Alrighty. My name is Dr. Justin. So this is about his. Uh, so Henry, I don't know if you're still here or not, but. Uh, What's up, Henry? Um, yeah, he said hi to you, by the way. Um, okay. So, And if you are here, man, just uh, just let me know uh, what day you want to do it. And just try to give me like at least 24 hours notice so that I can be prepared for it. Send me an email or you can confirm right here and I'll put you on the calendar. Um, you let me know, man. 12 noon Eastern, if that's possible for you. Good morning, Stephanie. Uh, good to see you. Um, but here's an update. And, and uh, Dreaded Robber Rouser would really appreciate any auditors out there. If you could share some of these videos that you find interesting about his lawsuit, if you could share them on your community page, get the word out there. It would really help him uh, quite a bit. Justin Spies, in November of 2023, I filed a lawsuit against the Lawrence City Commission and individually against Lisa Larson and Courtney Shipley as mayors for First Amendment free speech violations and 14th Amendment equal protection violations for censoring me while I spoke at these meetings during general public comment, and then they had me removed by law enforcement. Very good. <clears throat> Shortly after I filed this, the city's attorney filed a motion to dismiss my entire lawsuit. On December 29th, LJ World... If you couldn't figure it out, by the way, he's got like when he's in his house, he's got like a giant picture of Bob Marley behind him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he loves Marley, man. Published an article about the city filing their motion to dismiss the case. In February, an injunctive relief hearing was held. And yesterday, the judge in the case issued her ruling on the hearing and the city's motion. I understand, Hendry. Listen, I'm, I'm small potatoes, man, but I'm I'm always willing to try to help out an auditor that has a good <laughs> cause. I really I really am. Um, and Henry's smart too, you know, like cur courageous on this weekend. To dismiss. If local newspapers around here even bother to report on this, it won't be unbiased. So I want to provide everyone with an update on the case and the judge's rulings. I am the plaintiff in this case, and the city is the defendant. So reading now from the docket text, memorandum in order. Defendant's motion is denied as to plaintiff's facial and as applied forum status claims, retaliation claim, and une an equal protection claim. Defendant's motion to dismiss defendant city commission for lack of subject matter jurisdiction is denied. Defendant's motion to dismiss Larson and Shipley on the basis of qualified immunity is denied. Mm. End quote. <clears throat> Without qualified immunity, Larson and Shipley now can be held individually liable for my First Amendment retaliation claim, my equal protection claim and my as applied form status claim. The judge also ruled. So if you're looking to get in touch with him directly, uh, send an email to Spies, S-P-I-E-H-S, right? And Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N, at gmail.com. All so right, that's wanna... great, shot you, Justin. Okay. That I was engaged in First Amendment protected speech each time I was censored and removed at these city commission meetings. 
overall, anyone with a law degree will tell you that 90% of my claims are moving forward with only 10% of the initial lawsuit being dismissed with this ruling. And I'll provide updates here as the case proceeds. He got a lot. Looks he's like about 90% over. of them. He ain't bullshit. He's, he's, he ain't playing. Yeah, he's not playing. Um, <laughs> he listen, got more than one or two. That's what damn show. Sure. And, and this is what happens when you went like, you know, revolt happens when you take everything from yes. a man, but his life, when, when a man yes. has nothing left to lose and you keep pushing them and you keep pressing them, you know, I, a lot of people don't. So the Bible the says surely oppression makes a wise man mad. Yeah. So, that's so here's, look at that. that's a beautiful quote, man. Yeah. But do you know that pressing is actual, it was an actual uh, act that they used to do, especially during colonial, early colonial times, the I press. Don't. I've seen presses. I don't remember them being applied to humans. Though. So they, what that is, is that they lay them down on a flat surface like a board. And then they put a board on top of them. And then the village slowly puts heavy stones on them until they're eventually uh, crushed, crushed to death. I was picturing so, like a wine press or something. They slowly just crank it and squeeze them. But like it's they interesting. they crank them and pull them. But if you think about it, it's interesting that we call ourselves the press. And we mm. press government. Yes. Yes. Right. Like, yes. and that's why they don't want us to press government. It's kind of natural too that's when you think about it. When uh, I, I, when I feel like I'm pressing a cop, I sometimes I feel like the cop is pressing me. Uh, the press it puts on pressure. It's, it seems, you know, like the proper word for it. Yeah, I never, I never really put that connotation together because I, I mean, haven't even thought it, it. It, when you put enough weight on someone, they're going to either cry uncle or they're going to, yes, they're going to get that's crushed. That's why they call them the press. I got to yeah. I got to look now, bro, because that's what happens, man. Uh, instead of journalism, I'm be like, I'm the press. <laughs> yeah. You should get like a shirt with like an old timey dude getting like crushed to death, crushed to death. Right. Or man in time here. So I thought I'd read from an article here to show once again how wrong you COVID idiots were during COVID. This is from Yahoo News, published January, January 10th, 2024. Fauci to Congress, six foot social distancing guidance likely not based on data. In closed door congressional test. Okay, so six foot not based on data. That's from Fauci's own mouth. I just watched a auditing Erie County video this morning and he's in the beautiful capital city of Schenectady. And you still see those six foot, those freaking footsteps on my beautiful Capitol buildings. Yeah. I want those things off. I remember them. I want them off. Do you know how fast they put those up? Do yes. You, do you know, almost instantly within, I mean, they said, oh, all this stuff needs to happen. Almost instantly, plexiglass was, went up, glass went up. Traveling the country because uh, the same $600 flight I was taking to LA was 66 bucks uh, when the bug hit. Uh, I was afraid, but then I started traveling and I saw how quick it went from state to state to state. Those things went every look like within two days, no matter where I went across the country, them damn things. And what have I said about the government? The government's the Titanic. It does not turn on a dime like a speedboat. It does not react that it's quickly. It does not good. react. Exactly. Yeah, I'm trying to remember that, that stuff was already printed out. It was already sitting in warehouses. It was already ready to go. And then they just inst instituted it. Logically, yes. I mean, let's just come on. Let's just be let's just be intelligent about this. Testimony. Former chief White House medical advisor <laughs> Anthony Fauci said Excuse that me. federal social distancing guidance during the pandemic was likely not based on any data. Imagine that. Imagine that and conceded that the lab leak hypothesis of COVID-19's origins isn't a conspiracy theory. Uh, imagine that. Fauci's comments came during the second of two seven-hour rounds of transcribed but non-public testimony before the House Select Committee on the Coronavirus Pandemic. The Fed's oft-repeated six-foot rule informed numerous state and local pandemic restrictions, including mass mandates and capacity limitations at businesses. Mm. So you guys were wrong about pretty much everything, <laughs> actually everything with COVID, from masks to vaccines to social distancing. You the party of science money. is a party of fucking morons. Fine. And we all had to listen Fine. to you. Time, Mr. Spies. You owe me money. I, I, I can prove damages. I have a claim against you now. You owe me money, motherfucker. That's why well, I signed them contract. Well, technically, they used our tax dollars to develop, allegedly develop this, this vaccine. And then and where's and, our profit from it? Yes. And then they're allowed to sell it shit and keep all the profits, man. Well, it's and fucking not be genius. sued. 
and not be sued for it. Uh, didn't they? Didn't they? Weren't there? Wasn't uh, FISA trying to keep all this, all these documents buried for seventy five years? Yes. And apparently, uh, some, that got turned down. Somebody, uh, uh, the Japanese, did something, and they were successful. They got the seventy five years. I forgot what we did. Though some about technology, it'll come to me. But they got that seventy five years shit, and it was about no, it was about medicine. I don't remember. So I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you one of the reasons why he has a a uh, lawsuit. Hold on, let me. Wix is this. your platform to perform on. So he was. Do you remember when I said? Remember when I said that he was out there like protesting in front of the yeah. school on on yeah. the public sidewalk, like in the yeah. grass right there. So this is a guy that got sick and tired of him. He's in in Kansas <laughs> City, right? This is some freaking libtard. Some where's Waldo? Look, he's got his where's where's Charlie Brown shirt on. I and he thought, him. and he thought, "Hey, I'm going to stand up against this this wackadoodle guy." What is named he doing? Chris. He's bent over. What is he doing? Yeah, watch, watch, watch this. A school day started out with a scuffle between two adults. It pray. happened outside That's of our hero, Justin and Lawrence. Police say at, it happened because one of them tried. Look at the restraint that Justin uh, used to not just Rebel, eat him. You are a beast. You were like, I should hit you with this bone, but I did. <laughs> oh, I spared you, Lloyd. But I did. You steal a protest sign. KCTV 5's Nathan Vickers is live to tell us this what happened. So this is all on video. You're watching this, right? And so Justin's like, why aren't charges being filed on this? He even he even ends, ends up going to the local assistant DA to try to figure out, why aren't you pursuing charges? It's all on film. I want yeah. charges to be pressed. The guy blocked. What's missing? Yeah, he, if you look at it, the car was in a, in, a, in a crosswalks in front of a school zone, illegally parked. He was assaulted. His property was taken and damaged. Yes. And he was assaulted. I, if I don't, if that guy's a cop watcher and you don't like him, I can think of like eight different charges on this guy. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be hard for him to come over one or two. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like if, if one of us would have done oh, man. in a heartbeat, we'd, we'd have been under the jail. See that all sorts Nathan? of shit. Well, Brad, since the start of the school year, there have been demonstrators here at Sunset Hill Elementary. Some, uh, against masks some for masks but every day of the school year so far there's been one man in particular out here holding up his signs you'll always find justin Spees <laughs> standing by the lawrence school district right offices around 3 p.m i'm out here every day listen you'll listen always to, find him this is listen, the news saying you'll always find him listen to his heart when he's i'm out every day he's serious man he ain't half-hearted yeah. about nothing he's talking from his chest Yep. He's been protesting the district and county mask requirements. Zeitgeist always moves. And in this country, we look back oftentimes at the stuff that we did as a society and say, what were we thinking? In the morning, Spees demonstrates by Sunset Hill Elementary. He usually sets up across the street from Matt Hornicky's house near the crosswalk. Lamb day chops. one, uh, first day back to school, protester, anti-mask protester decided that he was going to sit on the corner over there and make sure that he got his word out to everyone. He doesn't agree with Spies, and he says he's tired of the spectacle. But even he was surprised when he saw this going on outside. His security cameras show what happened. Saw the car, the blue car, pull up and jump out. Take the signs Medicine, out of his hands, threw them into the middle of the street, which got assault, Justin, is his name, battery, riled up, and they were out in the middle of the street. The video shows Steve chasing after the I defended myself from someone that was taking my property and, and was a threat to, uh, to littering when he fell on the ground. Littering. My uh, physical well being. Hornicky wanted to break up the scuffle right away. Hey, I was yelling at both of them. I was yelling at both of them. So what I did is I called other men with guns because right. I'm not a man enough to go break it up yes. myself. I Don't wanted do to that in front up. of my house. It wasn't really that, you know, he was concerned. It was just bad for his property value. Get away from here with that nonsense. He's like, I wanted to break it up right away, but I was afraid I might break a nail. Uh, yes, 100%. yes. I know he how to break up a fight down He grabbed the signs left before they arrived. If they have to resort to that instead of arguing it, then I know that I'm right. Wardicke doesn't think the man who grabbed the signs I handled like things the right way, but he wishes the protests you would think, stop. Warnicky? Keep our kids safe. Help keep our kids safe. That's all we're asking for. Please. There we go. I hate people Voice do that. So he's saying help keep our kids safe as if the dreaded as, rabble rouser was the, was yes, the problem when I he hate, wanted to take the masks off of them. What about the kids? That is my, oh, I hate that when people do that, I automatically hate you. What about the kids? Somebody slipped and fell in the grocery store. What about the children? 
Don't you know the children are our future? The children are in that grocery yeah, store. Baby. My baby could have slipped and hurt her. They bring that baby to the kids quick, man. They, they just tell me that you're weak and you don't have an argument, so you got to go there. But just, just understand, Lamb Chop's here. He's a hero. He's nah. a hero. Okay. Ju- he cares more about the children by sitting there doing absolutely nothing while Justin Spee stays out there, rain, snow, sun, or shine, yes. cold and hot. Yeah. with his signs and he's trying to get these masks off these children at the school because look at the developmental issues that these children have i, I a, think go ahead, go ahead. well uh, uh, a it's it's reducing their oxygenation level by yes. about down to 80 percent from yeah. like do you did you know joe cool that in some businesses if your oxygenation level isn't uh isn't at a certain level and somebody like passes out in your store and hurts themselves that you can be found liable. So why is the government ch- choking us out with masks? Yes. And B on your list is uh, whatever sickness you possibly have, you are now attaching it to your face for the rest of the day, uh, as opposed to getting rid of it. That's not right. No, I can see if you're like, you're not trying to get, you know, if you block some spittle or something like that, if you're in an ER room and you're coughing, you kind of can't stop coughing. I get it. I, I get that, but it's yes. it's to protect other people. It's yes, not but when you. I get home and get off the bus or something, or, or, or walking or whatever the fuck, why are you going to kill me? So, so, so here's the funny thing: a fart. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physicist. I'm not a, you know, I I'm, not, I'm none of these things. I don't study atoms for a living. But I take the words of people that do. If if I can fart and you can smell my fart particle through your mask, which is much bigger than the particle of this the droplets the fauci yes. out droplets oh we yes. gotta watch out for the droplets oh, oh the, the droplets the scientists did uh they actually measured them and when they were debating on which mask everyone should get should we get the n95 it's professional grade and they was like you're talking about a virus it's so tiny that thing don't even have stand a chance of stopping it mask won't help stop a virus the spittle perhaps mm-hmm. So, so the point I'm trying to make is I'm going to let this play in the background. I think Uh, I'll have this playing kind of low in the background and we can, we can, we can sit here. I think we get the hint here. I I just want, I just want people to kind of pay attention to, let me know if y'all can hear this or not. There we go. Can you hear that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not too loud. Okay. So, so here's the interesting thing for me is like, I want people to pay attention to the new farm phar- pharmacia commercials that are coming out and listen to when they say something that I've never heard them say before. It really stuck out to me. Don't take if you have a parasitic infection. That's a very particular thing. Have you looked in- into it? Because you repeated it. Have you looked into a parasitic infection and how it would uh, work into your theory? Well, I, what I'm trying what I'm trying to say is that if, if they didn't want us to take ivermectin, Joe. And ivermectin is, is an anti-parasitical, the human form of it, as well as the animal form of it. Anti-parasitic, yes. So it's it's a legit anti-parasitical. So it fights parasites in, in the biome that's taking it, whether you're applying it to an animal or whether a human is consuming it. So even if it's effective, it doesn't matter what, uh, the, para, what the parasitical infection is uh, because they don't want you to uh, take it, which seems like they want you to take what they want you to take. Well, I mean, that's a possible angle of it, or it could be very effective. Meaning, if whatever it is that they're putting into it, we talked about the chimeric yes, aspects. probably of, both. Right. We, we've talked about the chimeric aspects of the R, M, mRNA. Yeah. Um, so the interesting thing is there was J, J&J, right? Johnson & Johnson. Yeah, I remember. That was not an mRNA vaccine. Okay. Then you had um, the Moderna, and then you had the Pfizer. That's right. Those why did they M- get pushed out? Do you know why? Well, the J and J got Johnson canceled. Johnson got yeah. pushed out early. Do you it's know because why? it didn't have the MR? <laughs> but they claimed because it was causing blood clots. Ah, uh, it looks like they all Today, may be doing that. The other countries the stopped uh, letting their pilots fly, <laughs> stopped giving it to young kids, and all that at an early age. Because they noticed the kids or uh, who are normally the healthiest at that age were getting clots. And they noticed that they are pilots. For some reason, the change in pressure, the more times you do it, it would cause the clots faster. Many of them were forming in the head and they uh, started grounding flights and shit. 
so well, all the countries were on tour for well, us. Well, it's interesting when you talk about that because, like, you know what air embolisms are and different embolisms. So yes, they will warn you if you certain altitudes. Yes, can, stay grounded. It can really mess you up, yeah. right? Yes. So I don't know. The whole thing's really interesting to me. Um, I don't have like all the answers. Point. Uh, it looked like. Uh, all the things that you said are logical. A lot of them I'd already agree with and, and thought through. But if you don't know me, uh, if, if you said something in front of me that I thought, you know, this is an altered opinion or different so and so, I feel like I'm, I'm probably obligated to mention, oh, it could be this, could be that. No, the shit you're saying is solid as fuck. Thank you, baby. <laughs> I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to look at that real quick, Justin, one second. Let me, uh, oops. I mean, I can't bring it up on my phone for some reason. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and click on that here. Let me mute that. All right. So. That's weird. All right. Um, I hate it when it brings up stuff like this. All right. So the, the, the statement is man arrested after allegedly threatening people at vid vax, uh, max maxine. We'll call it the maxine, the vid maxine clinic for children. Interesting. Let's, uh, mm. it won't let me, uh, what? Okay. Uh, it says it's not responding. Uh, uh oh, did I just, Okay. Kansas Kansas man was arrested Saturday after a parent and their child say that they were trying to enter a vaccine clinic when he waved a stick at them. Oh, this must be Justin. The suspect was placed under arrest for aggravating assault, aggravated assault Saturday morning, according to Lawrence. Yeah, it's got to be Justin Police Department. The 40 year old man, Ju Justin Paul Spees. Knows how they make him sound like a serial killer. Like, you know, it's like, that middle name. In there. Yeah, right. <laughs> This is how they do it. This is predictive programming. <laughs> is a well-known anti-mask protester. I, I call that a hero. Uh, hero uh, protester in the area, according to the Kansas Reflector, which is a piece of crap liberal rag that it's, it's more they're trying to paint their narrative i would yep. assume no way some guy especially this guy who was a seems like a, a guy who believes in uh, honor and shit is out there you know threatening him but don't you go in there and i think there's an uh maybe even a kid with them whoever's trying to go in he's threatening to hit you with a stick to keep you away it's just not logical so they're painting a picture to make you believe he can by telling you he's a long time protest and he has three names yeah uh, I've never, I didn't, that's the first time I've ever even heard his his middle name, uh, you know, put into any kind of. So it says, uh, so the 40 year old man, Justin Paul Spees, dun, 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 is a well-known anti-mask protester hero in the area, according to the Kansas Reflector. The paper reported he demonstrated that outside of Lawrence Public School buildings where there is a mask mandate for students. Now, first off. If he was a violent man, he had every reason and every opportunity to feed that guy his teeth in the middle of the road after he's Yes, yeah. he did not hit him. He pulled yep. back. So it's not logical. Yep. He says and to a woman and a child, if he if he's not gonna feed that dude his teeth, then why would he do that to a woman and a child? Yeah, right? logical. These people I'd have to agree with you, some shitty rag, blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah. So the gym. incident it says the incident on Saturday took place at a middle school where a local health department was holding a Maxine clinic for children. In an email to News Newsweek, Lawrence Police Department said it responded to the incident shortly before 10 a.m. Saturday. Now, I'm going to put a pin in there because I haven't read the full article. There's still more to go here. So I think he's demonstrating that just holding a, a protest sign was him menacing and waving a stick at two people that were going to see this mask thing. Of course, that is what yeah, he, any videotape pops up. That is what it's going to show. Right. But he was literally attacked. I know he hates me using that word literal, but he was attacked on camera and no, no attacked. His property was sold. You saw the video I showed earlier. No, no charges pressed. But yet just an allegation that he was menacing with a protest line, I guess, is what. what so it says officers arrived on scene and contacted the victim and the victim's child 
who reported they were attempting to enter a nearby vaccine clinic when the suspect confronted them. Wow, holding up a sign. Police Lieutenant David Ernst wrote, the victims reported the subject or the suspect separate, separate, separated a stick from a sign the suspect was holding and began to wave. Watch any oh, hold on. I got to. Live on a variety of networks. I will skip that. I kind of like this. still in video. chat, rebel rouser that you try yeah. to beat up an old that's, lady and a kid with a stick? Yeah, that's, that's his comment right there. I was approaching an aggressive manner like I was in the new video where I was attacked. That's logical, rebel rouser. Oh, so you were approached by them in an aggressive manner. Okay. So it says the officers arriving on the scene to contact the victim, victim child, attempting to enter a nearby vaccine clinic. When the suspect in front of them, police Lieutenant David Ertz wrote, the victims reported the suspect separated a stick from the sign and the suspect was holding and began to wave the stick at them, placing the victims in fear of bodily harm. There's the key word. Ernst says that the police will submit an affidavit to the Douglas County District Attorney's Office for for charging review. Daniel Smith. They already got them being victims that were confronted and all of this, and he's not even charged yet. It's just about to review whether it's going to be charged. You're already calling them victims. (laughs) Right. Uh, So Daniel Smith, a a spokesperson for Lawrence, Lawrence Lawrence Douglas County Public Health, which was running the clinic, was told told the, the Kansas Reflector Department uh, hasn't had any other notable incidents at its vaccine clinic so far and didn't have much information on the one on Saturday. That's not very notable any fucking way. So it says, uh, what we know is mostly heard from the parents coming in. Our primary concern is the safety, is their safety. Here we go. Yeah. Huh? Right there, look, at, look, at how, look at how safe the government is making these kids. Yeah. So it goes on to years say, from now, we're going to find out that that shit give you glaucoma. Well, it's the interesting thing is you, you've got like uh, the, the uh, what do they call it? The maiden's tale or the handmaiden's tale, the handmaiden's right? Handmaiden's tale. Where they were, they were talking about that infertility was an issue in the future. And there's a lot of scuttlebutt that this Maxine with all the boosters is causing infertility. Yes. In, and in all of us. Yes. In fact, it looks like there were a couple more, if you're conspiratorial minded like I am, that were in Africa uh, vaccines that uh, had really high rates of uh, infertility. And I mean, super high rates is is like that's Mm -hmm. what they were developed for. And then it comes out that this may be having an effect. I don't believe it's a coincidence. I don't believe testing ground for them to get it to where they want it. See, you remember when I was talking to you about like um, manifesting and stuff like that? Like, yep, like yep. your words can manifest things, so be careful what you say because it can Agreed. it can echo in eternity. Yes, it um, will echo in eternity. It yeah. will. Yeah. So, so here and here's the interesting thing for me is that, um, I you know I, and I and I said this in one of my one of my last streams, you know where. I, actually, I was, it was when I had Jericho Green on my show, and we, he and I were we were vibing pretty good. And I said, I said, you know, Jericho, I've heard, I've been watching your show for years now. I said, I've heard you make these predictions too, and warn people what's coming. I mean, you can see down the road; that's easy enough. But can yeah. you guess what's around the the corner, right? Do you have enough wisdom or enough foresight yeah. or enough enough intelligence to go, okay, if if that's the straightaway, this is how, what's going to happen when it yeah. turns that corner. Yeah. So. Wisdom is the ability to see around a corner of one's action. Or two. Or, or, or two. It yeah, might be a couple steps ahead. All right. right, exactly. So yeah. having wisdom and, and having the intelligence to apply said wisdom allows you to see around the corner of like, yeah. it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like, like your, your brain's not fully formed and developed till you're about around 25, right? Yes. So a lot of people, a lot of the, the, the youth, you know, they're, they're indestructible in their own minds. Like they, they think that mm-hmm. they can't die, right? Mm-hmm. It's because their 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 brain's not fully developed. They can't see around the corner of what their right. their choices and the consequences of the said choices will be. Right. Um, so that's where wisdom comes in. You can kind I could of sit up something. here. A person can come in. I can sit on a panel because I do this shit so much. 
and the energy they come in, the first shit out their mouth, yeah, I will know uh, what I, I will know their next few steps. Uh, this guy is insecure. He will have to make himself known and be the the, the popular guy of this. Oh, this person's uh, insecure. Uh, they won't get a word in because the so and so is. You know, you can uh, you can see oh, this person him bringing that up is really an angle because he wants to talk about Trump's uh, trial date later on, and it may take him a few steps to get there, but I'll be right, you know. Well, and, and that's and that's what I, I told my wife, like about three weeks ago or four weeks ago. I said, I said, it seems to me like I'm, I'm manifesting all the weird stuff that's going on. I mean, I'm predicting that all these these criminals there. What's up, puppy? Oh, <laughs> I had a little chihuahua. That's a chihuahua. Love right? Yeah, love. she got a brother, too. Uh -huh. So in, like I told my wife, I'm like, I feel like I'm manifesting all this stuff. I'm like, you know, I said that illegal immigrants are going to be taking over people's homes. They're going to they're going to kill people or or when you try to protect your home, the government's going to come and take you away, and give you their home. And I know this sounds super paranoid. I know it sounds xenophobic. I know it sounds bigoted. I know it sounds racist. I know it sounds all, all those all those buzzwords that they try to keep you to shut your mouth. Right. To get you to get you scared. Yes. And, and, but here it is. It's manifesting. You got you got veterans that don't get hardly any of the care that somebody that cro breaks a lot of coming to our country is getting that said. Yes. And I told her, I said, I feel like I'm manifesting all this stuff. And my wife was like, stop, stop, <laughs> and just stop doing that. And I'm like, I know, but I'm like, I'm trying to think happy, happy, joy, joy stuff. I said, someone but, you know, told me is that's how they use our power to bring, bring these things about because the good guys have more of ability to manifest so they keep painting these stories and shit. We keep make, bringing it about for them. It's like a cohabitation, a, a co-effort. What do they call it? They call it like mass hypnosis something. Psychosis? Mass, really? mass thing psychosis where the whole all the masses you will kind of do it. All right. So as in separate incidents across the country, people have been accused of intimidating health officials over the, the, the vid-19 vaccines, right? In Colorado in September, said now they're going to show some anecdotal bullcrap of people saying, "Hey, what you're is doing this is recent." Because I'm in Colorado right now. Um, I don't. This was probably three or four years ago. I mean, it's, okay, as okay, in, okay. as recent as COVID. Right. Well, because I've been in some of these places and I'm making them take take down their uh, c word stuff. They still have these things yeah. up and and mad shit. I'm like, that shit's over. I got that shit on video. I'm waiting to get my uh, we my my wife got kind of rear ended. Uh, in a car accident, it was very slow speed. So it was just a little bit of minor bumper damage from a truck, like a work truck kind of bumped yeah. into her. Some guy was crossing the road, then he stopped and then she started to proceed and then he started to cross the road again. So she had she to stop. Stopped. She was doing like maybe five miles an hour and the guy behind her might've been doing like five yeah. or six miles an hour. And uh, so it's in the repair shop. So we're down a vehicle right now. So, uh, but once my vehicle gets back up, that's my goal. I don't know if you know what I'm planning on doing. I, right now, I just no kind of showcase auditors and stuff like that, and try to back them up. Try to no idea in, is a good time. Yeah, in whatever way, I try to I try to um, amplify. You're you're, God. you're good at that. I thought that that would be your thing, and I thought that uh, you're so good at it, and you're starting out, and and everyone you uh, would agree that you know you do it well. That if you're starting out like this, you know you're trajectory you know would be like stupid by the time you get to your 500 interview you'll have more subs than we do i thought that was your projection well i mean my goal and i appreciate that i really do um and and it's, my wife tells me i make this look easy and and listen it's like that old trope you know if you're doing what you love you'll never work a day in your life and i, and know I, the feeling. And I genuinely enjoy helping people i genuinely enjoy you know i and i'm a tiny channel man but in whatever way i can elevate someone's voice I, I think it's I I have to do that. I and have you're to smooth them. with it, right? You know, the, the guy who was there, he's gonna feel welcome. I don't know. Everything about it. For when I when I've seen you, uh, you are really it's like you've known these people for years. Every motherfucker in the auditor you hop up on and you know, you're taking the time to know things about them and you do, your wife is right. Uh you, you got the right energy for this shit. Well, I mean, I do genuinely care about, I think, and, and I've said this before, I think everyone has a, has a very interesting story to tell, no matter how boring you think you are or how your life is, I yes. guarantee you there's something incredibly interesting about you that should be shared. Yes. yes. And you, yeah. if you think about it, you may be thinking your shit's not interesting because so many around you share a similar story, uh, but 
but that's absolutely not true because all of us come from different areas and your story about how you every day on the farm milking a cow shit that you get tired of and want to leave home to me is the most incredible shit in the world and i want to hear everything you can milk a, a goat with so and so and make cheese and shit you take for granted could be interesting as fuck to a different person mm. yeah it's probably. like it's like uh and and <laughs> dreaded says heck yeah yes yeah no i really do I, I there's this italian guy on the internet i forget his like he does he just goes around and like video he does vlogs or he just goes all over the country all there over the world and, and interviews like people traveling i like that more mm -hmm. but it's yeah. like he 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 does he just interviews people because and that's that's what i and so they, you they, picture yourself when you if you're traveling this will give me an idea are you talking about hotels shit or are you talking about some type of vehicle um, I don't know. This is a guy who does these these things. No, no, no. I thought you were alluding to your uh, future, what you were thinking about doing. Well, that's that's what I that's what I no. I was talking about this guy who does that. But that's yeah. something before I even knew this guy existed. That's something when I was on the Periscope days, I, I was talking about I wanted to go and just travel and I wanted to write like a book. You still like, do. I can hear it. Each, in you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's just yeah. it's one of those things where God God will tell me when to move. And when God tells Very me good. to move, I'll move. Yes. Um, Let me make a suggestion. Sure. If, you, if you're going to do it temporarily, even if it's just a few days of a month, uh, uh, get you a van. It'll give you more freedom. You know, it's just something you can sleep in overnight. That's a hundred dollars at least a night per hotel. And that's money that you would, would pay the van easily. And now uh, you'll do more. He won't be rushing because my second, third day is up to get home. It'll open up more shit. I travel a lot, and that's something I've been considering. Yeah, I'm, I'm, man, I'm used to living rough, dude. I was a paratrooper in the United States Army, man. I, I, I've, I've done field exercises that were 30 day field exercises. On the 28th day, they brought the Cav Scouts in to get showers. <laughs> well, believe me, man, I, I've been out there crusty. I, I, I don't have a problem uh, washing my nasty ass uh, in a canteen cup if I have to. Wanda, uh, Press Harder, and Broken are my guys. Uh, so I'm glad that you got to hook up with those guys. I haven't met either one of them yet. And, you know, I've met all these motherfuckers. I love them dudes. They met either one. So, Joe, when am I? When are we going to do an interview with you, man? When am I going to? It'd be it'd be tough because I've never done an interview. I don't do interviews. If I did one with you, people would lose their fucking minds. We can You're talk doing like one right this. Now. Yes, this is all day all good with me. But if motherfucker want to sit down and talk about me, my ego is. I've been trying to defeat my ego for years now. I would not let that beast lose. It seems like more to to lose than to gain. You know, it's just. It's more negative well, than positive. Have you seen my high noons, Joe? Not to interrupt. I have not. I have not. You got to watch watch my high noon series. Go into my videos, or I'm sorry, yeah. go into my lives and look for my high noons, and then that way you can kind of get an idea of it's exactly what we're doing right now. I we love just, talking. I got an opinion on every fucking thing, but same. it's got to be back and forth. Uh, I got to draw for that guy as much. I am not the man. I don't want to even feed that fucking is like a narcotic you keep that motherfucker starved keep the ego starved use them as a tool type shit uh, he's so dangerous man he's worse than heroin with that fucking ego shit man yeah but it's a you're, you're doing it right now you're technically doing a high noon right now with me <laughs> okay well those things are good when motherfuckers say interview i run uh but well, flex, you know me just drop a link and i'm there uh yeah. so yes if you could format it well, joe we're going to talk about this that and that suddenly absolutely i got more opinions than the so-and-so but joe we're going to talk about you uh you know I, I don't okay know yeah it mean. might not be because i mean some of the questions would be like for instance what motivated you to get into the auditing community no then if you if you could do that if you like we're going to talk about auditing yeah, yeah, I'm down with that. We so about basically, basically, what it what it would be is I would have probably about four or five questions that I would I'm curious as someone who's yeah. getting into the auditing community and trying yes. to get trying yes. to get information from people of like yeah. just to get to know you. That's it. It's yeah. not about pumping yeah. your yes. ego. It's not about yeah. It's not about glorifying yeah. you. You know, it cringes me when I see people up there. Well, I developed a theory. Uh, I, I began thinking about. I'm mean, like, dude, you're just a regular cat. Calm your goof ass down. Well, no, forget you your It makes me cringe. However, I think every motherfucker is is more brilliant than they think they are. 
even the motherfucker that thinks they're, you know, very low self-esteem or something, you know, I see in them everything and I need an exchange. I'm not even interested in telling you about me, uh, you know, if we come up a topic, but I am interested in you. I'm more interested in your opinions than what you did when you were six years old. I'm interested in how you arrived at those opinion, uh, opinions. How did you become brave enough to express those? And, you know, that's it. Ah, I love that shit. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of what it would be. It's it's just gonna be kind of a chill thing, and it'll go wherever it goes, and we vibe yeah. off of each other. Can yeah, we I, not I, call it interview calls? I swear, my friends. Well, I, it's, it's not an interview. It's, it's a it's a high noon. All right, we'll do it's a just, high. It's noon. high noon. Just go do a video, watch a couple uh, of them. My very uh, first one was technically with Justin Spees. He's the reason why we had the Bohannon kind of thing because he kind of looks like Bohannon from Hell on Wheels. Okay. Um, so, and then the official first one was Jericho Green. I'm not sure if you know who Jericho Green is, but I, I, I so. highly recommend. Here, I'll show you. Yeah. So I'd highly I've recommend. I've told other people this, too. Uh, I'm like, just format it differently. And yes, you know, I love to talk. Uh, and they and they didn't come up with the suggestions that you just did. Yeah. So, I mean, so for me, it's like apparently Flex is going to be coming on to a high noon soon. Um, and he never does does interviews. Uh, yeah. Pressed with Rancor, he 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 was on one of my high noons. He doesn't do interviews. I love it. It's not an interview. It's it's just a conversation, man. That's yes. that's really all. And I want people yes. to be comfortable. And and that's what I thought. You know, um, I like the the shit I saw. Some of you, I don't even remember, but you've had a couple auditors on here because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really get to talk to you till you was on Rose the other day or last week or something. Uh, but I noticed that it, it was auditors on there and. And I thought, yeah, yeah, I could, I could do that. I'd hop up and talk to them. And I noticed it's a one-on-one, -on -one, but it didn't seem like the egotistical shit that I fear. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not remotely interested. Like right here, I've got conspiracy corner here. I got a playlist with all my conspiracy corners. Uh, this one's my, my frequently asked questions. Uh, matter of fact, I got to make sure I put that one in. Home setting as you do. Yeah, I do. Uh, that's like this is so basically my membership. I got it's a. My first membership is just normal membership. It's 99 cents. I try to make it as affordable as possible. The second tier is homesteading and cooking. I was a gourmet sous chef for many years. I've got Very like 30 years of culinary experience. What do you know about homesteading? Um, well, I mean, I, YouTube University, man. Uh, well, I, yeah. I guess I could I could show you a little bit. Um, yeah. There's one video there, but I, I've I've got my own grape arbor. I've got um, I've got a mini orchard, two mini orchard. Uh, I've got like uh, two pear trees, two apple trees. Oh, I've got man. blackberry, raspberry bushes. I've got uh, right. I've got a. I got a bee apiary. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Uh, I've got 23 chickens. I've got yeah. uh, an apiary is bees. I keep bees. Okay, I didn't know. That. And and I've got a, a compost section. I've got a, a yeah, two, grape, two grape arbors, and I got yeah. nine raised garden beds in my front my front yard. <laughs> and uh, this is yeah, all. On, this is all on. You're lesson. killing it. All on less than one third of an acre here in the a city. Third right? of an acre. Yeah. Yeah. One less than a third of an acre. I'm very impressed. I don't know how much land we got out here. We got, I don't know, about 30 some chickens. We started with 40. I had to get rid of a couple of roosters because they were around boxes and all that bullshit. Oh, yeah. Uh but it's a lot of land. Uh and um we, I'm saying we, I didn't buy any of this. It's just the people I fell into with. Uh that like just massive the pieces of land it would take you forever to walk and now it looks like you know we have to find something to do with them and all of these things so i just started looking into this recently and you know how do you turn uh crappy soil into good soil how do you turn desert into uh fertile and all of that shit so i'm at the beginnings and i know because i've been doing the youtube shit that eventually what you want to do is what you're talking about i got buddies who do that and the 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 Every time they go out further, they take seeds with them and they throw the seeds out further and further away. And, they're, and they say that uh, that way, if I'm out, uh, I got a shit of plenty no matter where I go. And it keeps the bears away from your crib and any wild animals uh, because the shit's abundant everywhere. They don't have to risk coming around humans. Uh, I'm like, I'm learning all this shit for the first time. It's and that's where I learned it. I, I mean, I'm a this city is a, boy. Which one is this? This is the homestead. So this is Jericho Green. Oh, this is the uh, what are you high talking? noon ep episode high one uh, yeah. with Jericho Green. This is back when Nikki was. Very uh, good. But I mean, this will give you kind of an idea yes. of. Now I didn't make an intro. Jericho yeah. Green, a cool looking cat, man. Like his too. So keep that in the back. Yeah, he's he's pretty awesome. He's got like three hundred and sixty nine 
thousand subscribers. Damn. So he, he's a big channel. Um, he was my first, you know, I reached out to him. I've been watching him for like at least five or six years now. And, uh, if you're mine, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to influence you one way or another, but I want to see if you can see by the way they hold themselves, the way they conduct themselves. If you think they're just average sheriff, you know, Sheriff Smith off the street. So beach, if you are unfamiliar, is the beach which borders Mexico in San Diego County. Now keep that in mind. It borders Mexico. So this is what's going on. We're talking Southern about right now. An this auditing like, video. Now these guys acted all like super, super squirrely, kind of like secret squirrel, kind of like alphabet soup group kind of maneuver. And this was really close to as about as south as you can get yeah. in San Diego without touching the border. And they were doing this weird training on the Southern border. But anyway, so, I mean, this is he and I were talking, I'm bringing up things, having them react to it. And we're just having a conversation. So I'm not expecting you to have your ego pump per se, but no, so, no. So far, this is the shit that interests me. Anyway. So this was, this is my intro to pressed with rancor. Yeah. I don't know if you saw this or not. I what what here, I like to I'm... do is what I like to do is if I know I'm going to have a guest on, I, I like to have at least seven days advance notice. Yeah, look, we got we got Lawrence accountability in the channel here. Where do you learn to shoot, son? Putting food on the table at home? No, sir. We had a safe way. <laughs> so, but this is kind of what I would do. I would put together like a tribute video. So I would go through your body of work, and I would I would put together some of your work, and then I'd put clips in here. So if you pay attention, watch. So press with rancor kind of kind of strikes me as a as a I don't know if you've ever seen the Mountain Man Jeremiah Johnson with Robert Redford. No. Old seventies movie. Check it out if you haven't. It's a great I'm movie. Robert Redford fan, though. Yeah, so check this out. Ready? So Prescott Ranker reminds me of that guy. So yeah. be clips. I got you. Look at that. Uh, that's admirable. He out there in the cold wind, stormy. There but I'll put that. clips in here, protecting and serving the shit out of the public. It's a cool shot. I've done this so many times. I'm in Chicago, so I, I understand the weather. I know what he's feeling. Nine out of ten of them, you don't even get vids. I know I don't even make vids. I don't even put them up. Nine out of ten of those times. See, so you get the you get the kind of like he's out there, he's cop watching in a blizzard. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, twenty eight days of darkness or whatever, you know, in Alaska, right. where it's like the sun doesn't shine for like almost an entire month. I think. So I'm just kind of like getting the feel for it. Yes, I like it. And then I'll just put little clips in there. React. That was dope. He stopped and the clip hits and then he picks back up in real life. That's nice. <laughs> so I make it sound eerie like he's. Yeah, that's the movie I thought of. Him about, so yeah. I was about to say. So I, so I missed one here. Because if you look at the sign, what does that sign say there? Ah, oh, yeah, you missed one there. You missed an obvious one, didn't you? Man? Uh, <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I'm saying, right? Terminator, yes. Sarah O'Connor, right? Like Terminator. Like Sarah, like Sarah O'Connor, yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, think the future on here. Sarah O'Connor. Yeah, Getting the chopper. Getting the chopper. But this will give you an idea. Like, so I like the. I like to make like little tribute videos based on the vibe of the person yes. that's doing the auditing and that's, based that's, on what they say. And that's, uh, what's the word? It's like paying homage. That's pretty big shit. It's, it's beautiful. This is Sheriff Evan Colson. Stay in your homes, lock your doors, and load your firearms. This is not a threat. Look at uh -oh, all the acorns. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love this. Get my dick hard. I love doing this shit. Got to refresh my coffee soon. Yeah, I might have to rewind my shit. I didn't get out of bed yet. I put a t-shirt on to come up in the air. To come on, pal. <laughs> What? 
He's like, what the fuck are you doing? I thought I heard that. There goes Presswell Ranker with the grizzly chasing him. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you got to watch that movie. That movie's awesome, dude. Uh, I haven't seen it. I, I, it'll come to me by now. Sometime later, our hero fends off pirates. So now he's. Hey. Identify yourself. Uh, Identify yourself. Again. It's your name and employee number. Yeah, hey, you missed the Sarah Connor. Employee yeah, number. Like bad number. Employee number. Spit it out. Anyway, I I'd recommend if you if you all want to see the rest of this, I'm, I'm not going to continue to play it. But so what I like to do is I like to put like a little tribute video together. And I kind of get the, the the feel and the vibe based on a small body of your work as an auditor. Respect, respect. And then I and I try to put something together that's entertaining and and it promotes the show, right? So I'll I'll send you an email link like, hey, can you put this out on your channel to promote the show? Yes. Interview is yes. going to be on such and such a day Dope. at high right. noon. So I have buddies who uh, people do that without asking, without their permission. Fans, uh, mm -hmm. we're not talking about some troll who takes your shit and make you look stupid fans who want you to look good love you and shit like that and they'll put up a video of them and i got friends who catch attitudes about it. he should have asked first and shit yeah. i'd be so overwhelmed that this motherfucker thought i was interesting enough to take some time out of his day and i know what it takes to edit shit and all of that you know i, I could never even go there you know i'm a nobody thank you for taking uh time out of your day to think i did something special enough you know so you know, I admire shit like that, bro. Oh, I appreciate it. That's good 100%. to know. Man. Uh, but yeah, there are some people that get kind of butthurt about it. Um, but that got said, a big chat, uh, uh, auditor chat, like you were talking about, and in there it'd be all the robes and the big name motherfuckers. Uh, we're we're split. Half of these motherfuckers think don't use my shit, uh, and the other half think you know, I did. Ain't that what you wanted to be known and see these are audiences, people you would have never met, motherfucker, never even know who you were. What the fuck is you crying about? Have you have you seen my? I'm trying to get James Freeman to join, but I don't think it's going to happen. At Listen, all. Uh, uh, James, I was what entices him is a this certain topic or intelligence. He uh, a conversation. He jump at it, but you'd have to know him and uh, throw that uh, that steak out in front of him. But you picked the right thing. He'll interview with anybody, bro. But here, I'll show you. Like, so here's this one. So I'll, I will show this one. This one's hilarious. Uh, oh, I got commercials on it. I'll show you this whole one, and then we'll call it good for for today, guys. We'll end the we'll end the stream. Well, we'll we'll go out on some James Freeman. So I think James Freeman himself, on a different account, basically said, "I I have a connection, and it's not happening, or NH not happening." I think it's it might have been James himself on a different account saying, "Yeah, it's not going to happen. He's not interested." But here, I'll let this I'm telling play. you, uh, I've seen him in obscure places uh, because the topic was right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he's the topic. I got. Yeah. I got to get past this. Um, but here we go. Yeah. I, I just. So here, here's my video, basically. Let me turn this up. So here's my here's my video tribute of James Freeman. I think it's right. I think it's brilliant and hilarious. You can let me know if you like it. <laughs> Lawrence Connerville says, "Share my shit, please." Laugh. Out yeah. Out. Yeah, well, yours, you're, you and Justin are kind of entwined on on my trivia video. I I can't I can do that if people want to actually see it. I'd appreciate it if you guys would actually go up to my website and watch these, put them on. Uh, you know, I'll get some AdSense for them. Here, I'll make this bigger. I'm going to go up and re refresh my coffee. I'll be AFK for a second while we're watching this. Right, uh, Joe, cool. I appreciate right. it. Oh, you almost had it. <laughs> What's up, boss? What's up? I'm Lieutenant Wright. You know me. Uh huh. This is Sergeant Broyles. Here's my business card, okay? All right. Just so my email and stuff's on here. Uh huh. There's one for you. One for you, Stephen. So, oh, my. I'm I'm here basically just to do, just to let you guys know, okay? There is a state statute. It's called disturbing the polling place, okay? 
Uh -huh. It's New Mexico statute 1-20-20. Okay. So it basically says you can't disturb people that are here to vote. You can't disturb the 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 polling place. Sure. Okay? You're allowed to record. Uh huh. You're allowed to be in the parking lot and record, but we do have some complaints that you're like following people through their cars and stuff. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So well, minute. good thing I record so that we know they lie. It, it's cursing. It's 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 crossing the line of because you're mine. I walk the line of of the First Amendment. Hey, do you know about the USA? Do you know about the government? about the constitution and sure that's also false which is okay. why we record okay. because people exactly. make false statements in espanola and so i do appreciate it though i'll be okay. happy to this take is, that statue. statue yeah okay. I'd, I'd love that appreciate it and, it's called it's called jerry copies because i need okay. both here sure so i'm just here to educate you at this point sure you're allowed to record hey learn about the usa we just prefer you not bother people that are coming out following Grr. to their cars or anything like that okay? uh-huh uh -huh. so do you have any questions james i don't think so um so are you is anybody claiming that i've violated yes, this statute there is, there is at least one person that has what what that, person that, you, that to the point that she was really uncomfortable oh no life. really uncomfortable i'm a big believer in doing things that make you uncomfortable so we we live in a world that we want to be as comfortable as we can. Comfortable to really? the point that she was in fear. She oh, in fear. In fear. Uh, pussy. <laughs> so you kind of you kind of getting the gist of like I'll I'll listen to the words you're saying and I'll yes. tie it in with some kind of like yes. reference or something like that. Yes. You asked me to give you an opinion of it. I think it's good so far. Uh, okay. I think it would have been great. Uh, the theme of uh, fucking with people in cars and stuff. Uh, you let it, let him run more. And the same clips, I think, would have worked. Maybe a couple wouldn't have worked, but certainly the Betsy Ross and the, the, those and the other ones, uh, uh, people are comfortable. All that still works in the theme of here's James Madison, James Friedman started running from stuff. I think you'd have ran with that. It'd have been even fucking Oh, there, there's more. Here right. it comes. I remember that show. Ryan, fear has yep. made you weak. Fear is the mind killer. <laughs> fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. It's from Dune. How do you know that? How do you know that? Which is assault. Oh, okay. my goodness. Assault. So any, and that is the, in fear right, is assault. right. And in New Mexico, that is how the statute reads, right? Hey, that, pause, I, I fear you. Pause. Oh, my God, Sergeant Wright. I, Go I wanted to make note of the respect that they walked up to James. He knew that this was a fruitless effort when he walked up. This is now how they approach uh, the regular citizen. They all right. already have a certain amount of uh, trepidation about even approaching this guy. They know that he knows better than I do. At least this is what I feel. They know that he knows better than I do, and we're going to give it a shot anyway. This is not some domineering cop coming up. Hey, get out of the car. You're making people. It's, what do you think, James? Do you have an argument here? Uh, that's what I see going on. Yeah, it's uh, it's things are right. It's in the right order. <laughs> scared to death. <laughs> Get away. I'm scared. Assault. Assault. You must choose battle cries. You know, the cries we always emit just before leaping into battle. Oh, you mean like, not in the face, not in the face. Oh, Stop. 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 Hmm, lacks force, chum. No, more like, like, uh... <laughs> Spoon! Oh my god! I'm scared to death! He oh knew he god! walked over there what he was in for. I know. Uh, so that's assault, right? If if it makes me afraid. No, I'm afraid of I'm you. Not afraid I'm afraid of you. No, no, but I'm afraid of you. But it's not how you did you just you assault me. Well, I, 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 well, he almost I said it's not how you feel. Know, and he had to correct you. himself because that's me? exactly what it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Go for it, man. What would you what you have to say? Yeah, it's about he, it's how everyone feels about James. He's, yes, he's like uh, he, he, he said, no, I feel for your I feel for my life. And he was like, it's not how you. It's about he had to change it because he's like, it's not how you feel because that would have broken to his cognitive dis dissonance, cracked the uh, window on his little glass house a little bit. He had to avoid it. Yep. I I, I'm per I perceive you. Who I don't know. Who are Good you? shit, James. Me? I'm 
know who I am. <laughs> I perceive you. I know who I am. Disguised another dude. This is good. You do, do that's very good. Why do you think I got in my car and locked my door and rolls up my rolled up my windows? Because that's what you do. Because I fear you. Ooh. Because you walk up here with a gun, give me some arbitrary crap about how I can't record people. Well, technically, you asked for it. Right, you're you right. You're right. You're, 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 you're right. I didn't give you anything. You asked for it. But dude, I'm I'm scared. Okay. I, I fear well, you. We're done. I'm just letting you know. I fear that you. If you continue to disturb people, blow me. Uh, Marshall on. Hey, can that's, someone that's uh, put the link to that video in chat? Uh, this I'll, video right there? Yeah, I can uh, I chop can it, it up and put it on my uh, page or something. So You can use the whole thing if you want, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm thinking about making a video, maybe make a short, uh, uh, just so you talk about James, pick uh, 60 seconds of this and uh, put it on my shit. Well, I, I would greatly appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. He's then smarter than the dog. I, you are disturbing me right now. I've told you once. I've told you twice. I'm going to tell you a third time. You are disturbing me. That's fine. You understand? I'm going to ask you one last time to walk service. away. So, if if you continue, and you're yeah, and you're still I'm smarter than a dog. Here, you disturbing will, me. We will enforce that law if you continue. And and, and what level of violence? Wait, what right. level of violence are you willing to use to enforce your arbitrary rule? <laughs> <laughs> and the question is, am I willing to defend myself? In 1787, I'm told our founding fathers did agree to write a list of principles for keeping people free. So this is this is my high noon. You can tell me that doesn't look like the Dreader Wobble Rouser here. We'll keep watching it. So ah. this, this is the high noon. Like, I'll do like a little clip and then I'll do the high noon and I'll like have little messages. <laughs> I'm still trying to see if he'll answer the call, James. Or James Freeman, will you answer the call to high noon? You picked the time. I've already got the trailer made. You pick the time, high noon Eastern. Send me an email as long as I don't have a conflict confliction on my calendar. You're in like Flynn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> See, this is public eye candy for the ladies. That's, that's, uh, it, that's, that's a tip it. of the hat to uh, Rogue. Uh, there we come. Man. Uh, Yeah, so that's a that's basically my little trailer that I put together to, to try to lure James Freeman onto a high noon with me. If and I would see, I don't know if you can pull this off because uh, James like the argument, uh, which means controversy in some form. I'm not so sure that that's your forte because I don't see you, uh, you know, going back and forth debating things uh, with my, with people. Uh, if I was trying to lure him in, and if I were going to advise you, it would be go towards the controversial uh you'll get him he's, he's a sucker for it uh but i don't know if that's your wheelhouse or not like for instance uh if you asked him uh is uh, uh is the constitution uh, uh positive or negative net gain net loss 
now suddenly he's interested. You know, I asked him about a, uh, you know, you, a intentional mistake. Uh, and I hope he's not watching, but make an intentional mistake. Uh, we know that that's the law because uh, Smith first and Com Com uh, Cummings made that law and so and so. He would jump on you to be like, fucking that ain't law, it's case law. That's not law. Judges don't make, you know, you, I'd be, if I were trying to get him, these are the tax that I would use. Well, for me, I, I think the uh, Hendry and I kind of talked about, um, I, I don't really have a dog in the fight per se, but we have statism. That's what we currently. Oh, he loves. In. He loves that argument. Yeah. But the whole anarchism yes. is a theory. Statism is a system. There is your interesting, bro. Uh, anarchism is a, a theory. Statism is a system. You have a, a argument because there are more examples on your side, and he loved that. Well, uh, for me, for me, my argument is anarchism exists in the spaces between order, which is mean, not in the true form that uh, that people see anarchy in this uh no this, rulers uh, yeah not just no rules well they call utopian society uh that well, with no rulers uh, that well, thing doesn't utopia, really exist well utopia as you as you probably know is greek for the word it means nowhere no i did not know that yeah so utopia is greek uh, i'm yes. greek i'm greek and italian yeah, I'm, I'm like all up on the i'm all up on the grill there um i'm greek and italian and i'm like i, I think i come from the socratic bloodline i really do um, uh, uh, same. Um, that would add to your theory about it existing in the spaces between there, because technically that is nowhere. So you could use that in your theory and your arguments. Well, I mean, it's 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 uh, provable. Um, let, let's take Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. Um, anarchy existed, where even even when a government agency was in there, or police, or the National Guard, no one had complete. And co con Control, I wouldn't consider that proven. I wouldn't consider that proven. Uh, if you think about uh, India, uh, when they were freed, uh, the first thing they did was kill each other and fight everybody and all of that bullshit. It took a while before they settled down. I would assume when you remove it, yes, there will be conflict. So uh, if you could give me a place where there were no rulers for a year, I'd start to look at that data. Well, that, well that's, why I'm, that's what I'm trying to, uh, what I'm saying. It's easily replicatable, usually in a war or natural disasters. That too, too fucking temporary. I right. need longer data. That's, I assume that it would take months I think or I think years. Mis, I think you're misunderstanding. Okay. My, okay. my point isn't that anarchism is a theory that is provable to exist over long periods of time. Okay. My argument is the opposite. My argument is this, that anarchism exists in the pockets between order and its chaos. Like a yes. war-torn area where there's no rules, no rulers have been set up, no societal norms are being yes. respected. yes. So that's why I bring up like Hurricane Katrina. It takes a natural disaster to disrupt the normal infrastructure and order of that situation. And then you see how society just falls off. Yes, the but that's not a true representative of anarchy, you know, it's not. Uh, it if, is based uh, on my definition of it. <laughs> yes, I go with that. But um, I'm trying to think of it from James argument or from the other guy. If I wanted to what anarchy would truly look like that's like me saying that all right uh i'm gonna have a war uh i tore up all your buildings and drop bombs on your country do capitalism go it would fuck it would take years before you get something that looks like us i assume uh to have no rules you'll have to go with where people slowly do these things and then slowly then we'll have an idea if people can exist with no rulers i don't think a good representation is right after a natural disaster of what uh of anarchy or no rulers I, well uh, joe I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna say it one more time I yeah. think you're I think you're talking, but you're not listening. So you're not hearing me. You can All listen right. to Jimi Hendrix, but right now I'm hearing Jimi Hendrix. OK, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I right, so what I'm what I'm trying good. to say is my assertion is isn't that there is an exact model that exists in perpetuity anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's because it simply gets replaced by a system, not a theory, because it's a theory. It only exists like a vapor. I thought I agree with all of that. I agree with all of that. Right, but my, my point is the places that anarchy does exist is in between order. I'm in agreement with that as well. I think it's a is right. The only time we see no rules is, is uh, when the National Guard is sectioned off a place and the people are in there riding or whatever. That is the only representation. I agree with everything you said. Well, so I'm martial, listening because I have to law. listen to agree with it first. But that's martial law. That's a category error. I'm saying be, in the interim, in between when uh, 
anything gets established when there's just no rules. There's no yes. societal norms, no societal dictates. Nobody's there to enforce it other than the individual or small groups of individuals that have co collectively grouped up to protect themselves or to go on the offensive. So my argument, my argument is when, when you say that it doesn't exist after a natural disaster, and I'm pointing out to you exactly right here, the state of disorder. Uh, wait, wait, I'm not saying it doesn't exist after a natural uh, disaster. I'm not I'm saying that's not the only representation that anarchy could show itself. It could show another form, possibly. Right. Well, well what I'm saying is it, it quickly goes away when order is restored. Right? Uh, uh, yes, I get it. But uh, is there such a thing when order is restored as an anarchy living on a society with no rulers? That's the hypothetical right. theoretical shit that we're talking so i'm about. gonna copy this and i'm gonna put this here All this right, is this is what james this is what james freeman and like henry are talking about so like if i yeah. look at just the root uh thought of what anarchy is or anarchism is yeah. i'm looking at what's the definition of it now if you the second definition would be the organization of society on the basis of voluntary cooperation without political institutions or hierarchical governments. I don't believe that's otherwise a known thing. as anarchism. I don't believe it. It's a theory. I don't believe that's a thing. I don't it, believe that's a thing. The first one, no rulers, perhaps, and and you know it's, that's debatable. That second definition, no, uh, you will have a government. You'll call it something else. You won't want to call them police. You won't want to call it treasurer, but you will have a form of government, motherfucker. That's exactly my argument, Joe. Well, yeah. my my argument is this. If 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 uh, let's say let's say the free state of Joe Cool, let's mm. say that the free state of Joe Cool, he got a bunch of people that wanted to cooperate, wanted to get along, wanted to talk to each other, yeah. and and so eventually, well, the free state this the free state of the free state of Joe Cool starts to succeed. We start yeah. to get traction. We start to build our commerce. We start we get to get a hundred, grow. couple hundred people just so I can keep it in my head. Let's say we're getting bigger, a couple hundred people or something like that. Well, let, well, let's well, let's say there's only a hundred people. OK, people, let's I'm say okay it's a that. tribe of Joe Cool and we're right. part of it and we enjoy okay. it. Uh, we're putting out crops. We're we're self self sustaining. We're we're yeah. we're leading the, the whole nation. All right. Even though we're apart from the nation and all I the nations it. going, hey, I want what they have over here. I got it. So what happens at some point in time is there might be another group that might want to take what you have. So how yeah. do you defend against that? Uh, you, you, defend, have, you do you get guns and uh, you survive or you don't. Yeah, no two ways. Right. So so it's like, OK, well, if 100 people can be overwhelmed by a thousand people, well, you need to hire people that can help defend it. No, no, no. That's when you're going to go neurotic. You have to live your life. Life is scary. And even as Americans, there is still a chance that motherfuckers come in and drop bombs on you. There is no such thing as if you can get enough people and you'll be safe. No, because if you get 2,000 people, then you got to worry about 10,000 people coming. So you need right. 10,000. That's not a thing. You can't go so, down but no, you're proven. But you're proving my point. My point is any good system eventually turns into statism. I disagree. Because, well, hold on. Well, you're living in one. Yes, but we haven't tried the theoretical uh, no rulers shit. Uh, just because you have a government doesn't make them rulers. Well, I'm, I'm extrapolating it out for you right now, Joe Cool. You're the example. You started off with a hundred people that wanted to commute, that wanted to be in a community, that wanted yes. to work together yeah. voluntarily. Voluntarily, yes. We agree to we we agree to the free state of Joe Cool's precepts. Yes. yes. And and it's not that there's a ruler. We all agree to yes. as a community to combine and, and do these things, right? Yes. And then what I'm saying is uh, this next town over goes, hey, I like what they're doing over there. I want what they're doing. Yeah. So they, they we start building infrastructure in the free state of Joe Cool. We start doing farming. We start becoming self. So follow me, man. Follow me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, right. just, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm I've this, actually thought this part. This out. is connecting the dots here. I'm yeah. doing it real slow and real deliberate. Yeah. So eventually, at some point in time, no matter how cooperative and how willing we are to be in this community, there's going to be another group that may want to come in and infiltrate it or take it away from us. That goes for conquer. every capitalism. So and so, right. so far, we agree. But, yeah. what I'm, but what I'm saying is in order to protect, protect what you love and what you've created, yes. it requires some form of a militia. Okay, some form I can of the ability. Okay with that. Yeah. So some form of an ability to defend. So okay. let's say you're defensive only. You're not you're, you're you don't you don't want to do violence. You're not being offensive at all. You just want to defend. 
Okay, so then the town over, the next town over says, "Oh well, the free state of Joe Cool is they're starting to they're starting to to do some drills, and they're they've hired some mercenaries. Now they got an extra hundred people guarding their borders. Yeah. So we need to hire some people because they might go on an attack with us, or we might want to take what they have. So so basically, it becomes like an arms race, right? Of people of militia. So, yeah. So at some point in time, there's always going to be one group that wants what you have. Yes, that's and they are willing to do violence to try to take it from you. And if are you willing to defend it with violence to keep yes. it? Yes, yes. So the question is, eventually, no matter how anarchist you start, you eventually turn into a state with a standing <laughs> army, and that's been replicated all over the world. No, I don't understand yeah, how you're you shaking don't your have head. To, I was going to say that you don't have to have a uh, standing army. You can do it like the militia, uh, like they said, uh, the Constitution. Uh, you can have every man be part of this uh, army that's ready to spring forth. Uh, now it's not a standing army, and technically it's an army or whatever, but it's militia, right? You. Uh, so now we're not statism no more. We don't have a standing army. Well, it's voluntary, right? Exactly. So what happens when the barbarian's at the door and yes. you're about to lose everything? Yeah. So you're either going to get conquered or you're going to protect it. That's the situation with everyone. It's not. I'm not right. I understand alone in that. that. Yes. But my point is, is that anarchism is a theory. Statism, which is what we currently exist in, is a, a system. We agree with that. I was talking right. about uh, hypothetically uh, reasons why uh, it could not. Uh, what would preclude its its existence? Period. Uh, you know, I I don't well, know if. Yeah. Well, my argument, Joe, would be that if you extrapolate it out, it always leads to statism in order to protect what you I built. would agree. When I extrapolate it out, I can only go up to a couple hundred people, which is probably why I started out that number. After that, it becomes what you call statism, government. Uh, I don't, don't see it passing a couple hundred people. And, and here's the thing, too, is if you look at even something smaller than that, you look at David Koresh yeah. down at Waco. I mean, eventually he's banging everyone's wife and all these guys can't even mate with their own wives because he's banging all the wives. And he was a ruler. Right. And he becomes a ruler. Yeah. It didn't start off that way Yeah, because Christ was, Christ was king, but yeah. then he became Christ. Yeah. Uh, Isn't that we, interesting? Uh, yes. And in fact, he tried. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we want to go religious here, but I was just talking about this yesterday. How, how he would always tell people, don't credit me. You know, I can't do none of this without my father uh, type of stuff. He made me think of a long conversation I had with one of my good friends yesterday. It was really good. Uh, all right. I can't think of two things, so you have to talk. Those. I know, man. We're, we're going to end the show here in a little okay. bit. But I, I yeah. wanted to show, uh, I, well, Lawrence Lawrence wanted me, Lawrence Accountability wanted me to do his. That might be the only reason why he's sticking around. Lawrence, I subbed you up, Lawrence. I'll, I'll look at your shit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show his real quick, and then uh, we'll call it good on that one. Um, right. It's a little bit longer, and uh, for those of you that are gonna hop out because you've already seen it, appreciate you. Um, but I, what I would say is, um, so my second tier membership is four ninety nine. What's up, Henry? Generally specific, I've never had barbarians out out with or out with government show up at my door. Other than yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you, I hear you, Craig. But listen, I don't really have a dog in the fight of this. Like I, you were, I think Hendry was the one person that really kind of made a lot of sense. He didn't, he wasn't acting emotional about it. He was yes. articulate. He, yeah. he, his, his approach was very intelligent and I really, really respected it. And he's the one I think that made the most impact on me. But I, I'm just saying, I don't have a dog in a fight. I just live where I live. Nor, um, nor do I. I do want to do what you're doing, though. I do feel like it's immoral to be part of this. Uh, I, I believe it's literally slavery if I can't say I don't want to participate. And, and I got a, a problem because I'm a fan of God with some yeah. man trying to be my ruler. Uh, uh, so I want to get away as uh, to at least a big extent. It's uh, it's interesting for me because I, I, I find it to be fascinating. I think on smaller tribal levels, you can have that kind of. It but looks there's like always going to be someone in it. charge. Yes, but uh, again, I, uh, you got the guy in charge. Let, let's say it's still voluntary. This can work voluntarily because we agree that so and so is best at their architecture. We need a bridge built, and Bob's good at it. Uh, and you know, so we defer to Bob willingly. If Bob says do this or else, and you can't walk away, now it's no longer a legit okay. system.
Sorry about that. I'm not trying to blast your eardrums out. I don't know if it's still sharing or not. Yeah, it is. Um, so let me, this is for Lawrence accountability did hang out. So, uh, let me skip past the intro here. Oh, you almost had it. You're going to be quicker than that. Hey, do you know about the USA? Do you know about the government? Can you tell me about the constitution? Over there? Or not. Why? This is a lobby. Yeah, he, he can go over there. No, he can't. It's not unrestricted area. It well, is. It is. Oh, it's the wrong one. It's this is, is in Lenard, and I love this dude. I was like, damn, he out with dude? Ain't nobody ever seen his face. He out with Lawrence? <laughs> no, sorry about that. Um, Son of a biscuit. Uh, promotional high noon. With That one's one you really want to watch. That one was really good. I, I enjoyed that one. Where's my uh, Lawrence accountability one? Uh, GS, I think this is something, or I don't know if you had to go through this or not. You probably didn't, but if you start off auditing at first, people don't see your face. And if you make a few videos and it don't see your face, it becomes a thing. Uh, uh so everybody at some point, I want to know about your decision to show your face. Uh, oh, I'm already out there. Yes, you're already out there. You might not have to make that decision. Inland Auditing has yet to show his, and he's like, I'm going to enjoy the little time I have without showing my face yet. I understand that. Uh, I decided to show my uh, shit extremely quick because I've been watching the videos and know that it was a thing and shit. And as go. soon as I showed my face, uh, uh, people are like, yeah, now we know what you look like. We're going to get you. Uh, the threats just rolled in. Here it is. Okay, here it is. I haven't put it in the playlist yet. Yeah, I've already had my address doxed and stuff because yeah. I, I, I already, bro. You got well, listen, I was you got. Well, I was on. Uh, you guys probably most of you don't know about it. I, was, I used to call me. They used to call me. I was porch dick. Okay. So I was a guy who sat on his porch, sipped whiskey, dipped tobacco, and was kind of a dick, foul mouth, you know, angry paratrooper. And uh, so I was on Periscope for like, I'm, I was an OG on Periscope for probably about six, seven years. Um, and then they canceled that, that platform. Um, but I had somebody come in with a profile picture that was a real realtor's version of the front of my house yeah. before we had purchased it. Yeah. And the intimation was, I know where you live. And yeah. guess what? I've yet to have one of these little freaking simp ass Yes. Mouth breathing, limp wristed yes. prick show up at my fucking front door trying to fucking shut yes. me the fuck up because it won't end yes. well for him. I promise him that. I do that shit. I used to go live from the same corner and, and let my fuck you know, motherfucker, you know where I'm at. Well, and people yeah. would come by and you know <laughs> say hi and shit, but none of the tough guys ever showed up. Yeah, the internet come warriors give me weed and shit. No, no tough guy showed up. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not trying to. I'm not. I don't want to be a violent person, but the army spent a lot of fucking money to make me a very violent person, very effective at violence. We'll just put it that way. This is Lawrence. This one's uh, this one's actually okay. kind of like dreaded rabble rouser and Lawrence because right, they're kind right. of attached to each other. Right. Uh, Michael's pretty badass, man. Oh, you almost had it. You're going to be quicker than that. Are you not sure who I am? No, I'm not sure. Who You're not sure who I am. So the department hasn't let you know who I am. <laughs> hey, pause. Mm -hmm. Lawrence, I don't mean to be judgmental, but I'm an honest, happy cat. Uh, that worries me. Whenever the person comes out, you don't know who I am. You're going to get to know who I am. That's ego. And if you haven't been here earlier from the conversation, I run from that shit. He's a liberal, so he's he's all about it. <laughs> I love you, Michael. No, he's a badass. All right. You all know exactly who I am. Say, Say my Michael. name. No. Are you Michael? You're goddamn right. Very good. Those good years, things may change when all the kids grow up and start wearing ties and going to the polls. You can have that feeling. So this is my promotional video for Lawrence Accountability for the high noon that we did. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I think it was last Friday. Back not last Friday, the Friday before last Friday. I don't know when it was. I'm sorry. They're all, I don't remember dates. Same. Sorry, we got a that was dope. That was so, dope. Hey, so we got, check it out, man. We got uh, your boyfriend's back. They're uh, Wanda Mice. Your boyfriend's back. 
your boyfriend's back that and you're gonna, gonna be, in, be trouble. in trouble. Hey la, hey la, your boyfriend's back. Yeah. He's got a crush on you. He's your favorite, biggest fan auditor, by the way. Is uh Master Sergeant RTL is a he, he's in love with Wanda Mice. Okay, then go about your business. I'll I'll right, I gotta let my dog out. You ain't gotta sit here. You know that. I don't know what you're asking. Did you come here to fill out a form? I did. Okay, then fill out the form. I will fill out the right, form, Josh. Get, get to it. I will, Josh. But not under pressure or duress from you. Started out with a scuffle between two adults. It happened outside of Sunset Hill Elementary in Lawrence. Police say it happened Give because me one of them shit. tried to steal a protest sign. KCTV 5's Nathan Vickers is live to tell us what happened here. Nathan? Well, Brad, since the start of the school year, there have been demonstrators here at Sunset Hill Elementary, some uh, against masks, some for masks. But every day of the school year so far, there's been one man in particular out here holding up his signs. <laughs> You'll always find Justin Spees standing by the Lawrence School District offices around 3 p.m. I'm out here every day. He's been protesting the district and county mask requirements. Sight guys always moves. And in this country, we look back oftentimes at the stuff that we did as a society and say, what were we thinking? In the morning, Spees demonstrates by Sunset Hill Elementary. He usually sets up across the street from Matt Hornicky's house near the crosswalk. Day one, uh, first day back to school, protester, anti-mask protester decided that he was going to sit on the corner over there and make the <laughs> word out to everyone. He doesn't agree with Spies, and he says he's tired of the spectacle. But even he was surprised when he saw this going on outside. His security cameras show what happened. Saw the car, the blue car, pull up and jump out take the signs out of his hand, oh, the throw them into the middle of the street, which got Justin is his name. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Show me, show me what now? Look, look, I just like lamb chop and I feel better. I'm a lamb, not a big <laughs> Riled up and they were out in the middle of the street. The video shows Spies chasing after the man. I defended myself from someone that was taking my property and, and was a threat to, uh, to my uh, physical well-being. Hornicky wanted to break up the scuffle right away. Hey, I was yelling at both of them 100%. So he, he called 911. That's how you break, right break up a fight. You call if someone. They <laughs> resort to that instead of arguing it. He's a hero. Then I know that I'm He's right. a hero. He, he pushed three buttons. And he grabbed the signs, handled things the right way. But he wishes the protests would stop. Keep our kids safe. Help keep our kids safe. That's all we're asking for. Please, voice your opinions. Do it in the proper manner. And just... Leave our kids alone. <laughs> Leave Brittany alone! Today, the Lawrence Police Department <laughs> was funny, actually made contact with the man who grabbed those signs. Uh, they said that they submitted an affidavit to the Douglas County prosecutor, but right now they haven't made any arrests and no charges have been filed. All I want to do is come in here and do stuff that everyone has the right to do and not Very be good. fucked with. You were suggesting there's Ooh. no problem. They've asked you to leave, so they clearly see that something is going on here. There's a problem. My mere presence is a problem. And I'm sorry that that's happening here. You don't have to apologize. Love you, baby. You're beautiful. You got a minute? <clears throat> you got a minute? Thanks. So, yeah. that was, that's, all that's Justin Spees. And, and so that's it. I, I introduced Lawrence Accountability. That's Michael. Um, you'll see him eventually, but now we're introducing that Lawrence is going to do his own investigation. Right. And so some of this is kind of like, you really don't see much of anything. You just hear the audio, but so like when I say that they're kind of entwined, um, so Lawrence accountability is more what I would say, kind of like a classic liberal. Um, Dr. Spies was a professor at a college. He lost his professorship because of his views on the, the, the woo flu, the sweet and sour sniffles. Um, and for other reasons, because he came out against this stuff. I don't want to speak for him too much, but so he would be considered more like a like a Trump kind of Trump guy. Yeah. And Lawrence accountability is more like a yeah, fuck Donald Trump, I think. Right. But they disagree, but they agree on the freedom to be able to speak and they fight yeah. for each other's rights. Right. Yeah. So that's so important. Means they can have a conversation. They can communicate all exactly. things now possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do a report. This is Michael, by the way. Okay. I'm going to give you an Lawrence opportunity to clarify anything. Um, <clears throat> you know, Justin requested some body cam, and he was he was given that body cam, 
And what I heard on that body cam kind of distressed me a little bit. What I heard was you telling Josh that you were willing to arrest Justin if he... Oh. What happened? So, Damn it. Sorry, I muted it. There we go. That body cam. And what I heard on that body cam kind of distressed me a little bit. What I heard was you telling Josh that you were willing to arrest Justin if he told him he wasn't welcome at the DA's office. Damn. Ooh, you decide. Ooh. You decide. That's so now they're doing a conspiracy right now with and the cops. Then, the next day when I talk to you, you're telling me no law was broken. You probably expect there's some videos online. Yeah. Maybe you guys could sit down with the DA's office and mm -hmm. get them to understand that when you can make this, you guys can easily turn this into a federal county sheriff. Kind of hard to hear. Yeah, I guess I'm a little confused. I'm trying to figure out why you're willing to arrest somebody when no law was no law was broken. So I understand what you're saying. Um, there has been communication since that time. So mm -hmm. I think yeah, I asked you about the shit leading up, and you want to tell me what happened afterward. I asked you why would you make the decision up to that point, and you sure shit out your mouth is, well, since then, I'm already uh, thinking less of you. Mm -hmm. um, I told you there was conversation Dean had um, between, mm -hmm. I don't know if I told you the entity, but us and the DA's office. Mm -hmm about where we sit. Like right. that day with Josh. You guys could have refused to react to that. So those conversations... That's Josh. Are they, they are. are. Josh is That's the what I wanted to hear, DA. is that we're having conversations about not letting yeah, a DA... That's Justin Spees right there. This is Justin Spees. He's filling out his uh, Freedom of okay. Information, or his Cora, because um, he wants to know basically why was why has there not been an investigation or charges filed against the assault that happened to him. Ain't Justin a rebel rouser? Yes, that's the okay. dreaded rabble rouser. Okay. And this is the body cam that Lawrence got. Okay. Or, and Justin also got as well. Right, of, I get it. Lawrence that began day. his investigation. Yeah, he now he's asking some questions from his angle. Yeah. No, I understand. My, my I understand. So I think clarification has, has been obtained now as to what we will be prosecuting. Well, I think it, I, I guess my problem is is I'm not sure that clarification was needed. If no law was broken, what's the Right. What's the basis for you saying that you were going to arrest Very Justin? good. Stick to the point. Very no, no, no. Good. He's no threat. Hold your fire. What about him? Not this time. Believe me, there's a much bigger threat to the men in blue. That's him. Kill the bastard with the video camera. Get him. He's shooting like this. You're not going to survive. Hold your fire. So here's here's another example. This is Justin getting tossed out of a council meeting. Found a crime for you to prosecute assault, wanton destruction of personal property is. <laughs> Look at the way they're carrying that man out, dude. That yeah. fucking pisses me off that a veteran was treated like that. Yeah. Anyone. There's a witch cackling. Witch one of those cackles emails. Ah oh, man. The lollipop kill. The lollipop kill. The three cops of the lollipop guild. <laughs> Come on, this is genius. I'm the Con I'm the white Kanye man. <laughs> All right. Um, yep. All right. Michael was just threatened right there. Shit like that. What's up, folks? They drew first blood, not me. Mm. Well, Johnny, let me come in and get you the hell out of there. They drew first blood. Uh, so, is there any additional public comment? I don't know. Didn't yeah. think so. There's somebody. And Mayor. Yes. Point of order. Um, although you may not have seen it, you know, I don't take too kind to members of the community 
assaulting and being verbally assaulting or being verbally and physically abusive to other members of the community. So I know you didn't see it, but I did see. About to say he's only worse was exchange between Mr. Boyle and Mr. Aravi. So I just wanted to make that point known. Okay. Please, let's all use our words. (laughs) Thank you. Joe's tripping out right now. Like, whoa. Well, I'm going to make a report with you. You were here. Did you not hear it? I didn't hear it. How come nobody heard that? I, I, I didn't hear it from one of the robbers or anything, but I can have a patrol officer come and collect video from me. Okay, and is, is, is something going to be done? I mean, the guy, the guy said he was going to knock me out. Is that not a verbal enough threat to do something about it? I'm really, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost shaking right now because if I would have said something like that, I would, I would have already been cuffed and thrown in a car, and that's the He's right. part for me. We'll take the report. Well, so. and then the will decide you do you throw really cups on whoever you want to and throw it in front of the deal. deal. And here you go, you know. Well, I don't, I, I don't know your experience here. Uh, dealing with that, but that's all the well, we'll yeah. have to deal with. I'll just have an officer come. We'll take a report. We'll, we'll, have, we'll send you a link. We'll send the Ain't that a bitch? We'll gather all the information. We'll send Blow me. And nobody will do anything? Is that, I mean, seriously? I'm not, no, I'm not saying they will or they won't. I've never been arrested over email. Sent me an email and a link. No, they cuffed me on the spot. I'm going to press charges. And I want charges pressed. The reason I want charges pressed is because of all the times that I've been treated that way in here. I've been arrested in here and, and kicked out of here for a lot less than that. And I've never made a real threat to anybody. And your chief runs around acting like I'm a threat to people. And I just got threatened in this fucking room. Let's go. I mean, it's a city hall meeting. All right, so it's a crime in public. I don't care if there's a meeting going on or not. We're going to enforce the law. You tell your supervisor that Michael's here, and if we make some kind of bullshit decision because we don't want a scene, I'm going to have a problem. I'm not trying to. I, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm not trying to be hard on you. You're doing good. You're, you're cool. I'm, I'm hot because I got threatened at the city meeting after I've been tried to be made out to be such a threat. Yeah, that's absolutely And And so your supervisor, we're going to take action on this. There's going to be something written up. I'm getting a case number tonight. So if I need to spur up, I'll go to the community. I already proved that it says it has to be great quality. Okay. Stop me out. Stop me out. I didn't know what you guys classified as great. You've got to break a break skin and cause bleeding and stuff. Yeah, you're a great one. I'm always trying to lose it. The black knight's always trying to hurt you. Come on. <laughs> Just for the scratch. Prosecutor Hayes, we'll see how that is. Yeah, yeah, I didn't better serve a few times. Well, this one, Ted? Yeah. They came in here about a year and a half ago and made this nice presentation at the city commission meeting. If you want some time, just go out and look up Lawrence Accountability and look at the playlist of the prosecutor. And there's one that has 35,000 views. That's the one. So that's that's basically it right there. Um, that's my promo video of Lawrence Accountability. We did the. Uh, so when when can I get you in there, Joe? Cool. Uh, I don't know, but we can plan it. I'll check out one of the other ones. And uh, yeah, I'm down. I love conversing. I think it's it. 
Okay. All right. I'm going to bail and let you say the goodbye to your guests. I just served up like three people. So I'm going to check them out now before they get lost in the millions of people outside. Awesome, man. Uh, it's been great when I'll be around. Yep. Way to right. check. Take care, Joe Cole. Thanks for coming out and hanging out. All right, guys. Uh, thank you to Joe Cool for coming and keeping me company. I appreciate it greatly. Um, put you all out of your misery here. Um, hope you enjoyed that um, conversation that we had. I really did. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you all pretty soon here, guys. Um, let's, uh, let's send you out with the normal outro. The only thing that enrages me is when you hear people say, you know, you must believe me. I have no obligation to believe anybody. You have an obligation, if you want me to believe you, to prove what you're saying. I have a right to ask simple, fair questions. How do you know that? How can I trust that? How, and, if, and if you don't give me those answers, then I just don't believe you. And I don't have to believe you. And if your recourse is, you're a bad person for not believing me, fuck you.